paradigm of absolute control. And that's why we're just out here doing simple things, pointing out that we're meant to be in nature and be natural. And this is where we find the source that God made to transcend the new world order. And that's why they want to try to keep us out of it. I'm angry. I've had enough of these people. Little bones of Christian murder scum. They're on giant death factories keeping babies alive. And selling their body parts. What more do you need to know about these people? I go out and face this scum. They literally crawl out from under rocks. They have green looking skin. And they run around screaming, We love Satan. We want to eat babies. Hillary's in the creepy weird six of men. She sleeps in the same room with that creepy weird old woman whose mother wears a hood over her head. That woman number one is ugly. Imagine how bad she smells, man. I'm told her and Obama just stink. Obama and Hillary both smell like sulfur Literal vampire pot and goblins Are hobbling round coming after us My spirit gets close to that evil and I feel it go Ah, ah, ah We're such self the crap. We don't even know this hell itself rising up against us. Millions of pointed people of the very worst type, and I'm so pissed. We're gonna steal your daughter at the mall. about me. Why don't you put it on? I'm curious to hear it. Uh, I don't think you're gonna want to hear it. Max, just put it on. Put the song on. It's not very nice. Max, Max. Are you sure? Put it on. Okay. You're a mean one, <laughs> Mr. Grinch. That's me. You're a fugly piece of shit. What? You bring bendy straws to bathrooms Cause you like the taste of piss, Mr. Grinch No No, I, no I don't, I, Max I wouldn't suck your dick if it was dipped in honey and could cure cancer Jesus Christ, who wrote this? Who wrote this song, Max? Also, you have no dick Stop, stop the song I, I can't Max No, I can't Stop, just stop the song, hit stop It's broken What? Broken. It's jammed. I don't know what you want me to do. Just like turn it down. I can't. I'm a dog. Max, you're a dipshit, Mr. Grinch. Okay. Even babies want you dead. Wow. You've never brought home a woman because you're scared you'll wet the bed, Mr. Grinch. I wish they weren't so good at rhyming. The three words that best describe you are as follows, and I quote. Bitch. I'm not. Dumpster. Bitch. No, 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 no. This is not how it goes. I knew they changed it, but I thought it'd be like a key change or maybe like a solo or something, but this is, this is degrading. This hurts. Pretty detailed, but yeah. What happened to the alligator part? I actually liked that part. It was kind of funny. Oh, it's, a, it's a crocodile. No, it was an alligator. No, it's a crocodile. Was it a crocodile? Yeah, no, yeah. It's a seasick crocodile, yeah. Oh. You're poor. Mr. Grinch, you didn't leave a stone unturned. You can't afford the bus. Lower middle class, maybe. You're deathly allergic to tree nuts, and your exact address is this, huh? Mr. Grinch. No, no, no. I, I, 1482 don't... Mount Crumpet Boulevard. Holy shit. Whoville, Michigan. That's my address. What are you gonna do? 
I mailed your bitch ass a bag of nuts. This is a song that kids sing? Every year they sing this, like around the Christmas tree. Yeah. A song that says bitch. It has said bitch like three times. Yeah, that's, that's too much, yeah. They know I gave the presents back, right? Like at the end of the movie, I gave them back. I'm a good guy now. I go to church. Yeah, I, I believe I, you. Oh, there's the solo. Yeah, actually a really cool solo. Wow. Shame about the rest of the song. It's just a dress that you are in red. I'm fucked. Mr. Grinch. This feels bad. You don't know how to read. This feels really bad. I cannot stress enough how much you love to suck down pee, Mr. Grinch. According to an anonymous poll with a sample size of over 3,000 who's who are asked to rank you on a scale from 1 to 100. Mr. Grinch? Based on traits such as likability, general odor, and physical attractiveness. The highest devil we got was three. What's wrong, Mr. Grinch? You ever feel like no matter how hard you try, people will always see you as your past self, just as this one thing, one unchangeable thing. Like a dog? I guess no matter what, I'll always be a big green monster. I thought you were gray. No, I know I'm green. Oh. You didn't know that? Oh, dog. That's right. I love you, Mr. Grinch. I love you too, Max. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um... I life's stressful. I was just, you know, I was really hit doing my chest. Everything's just furry. And I'm like, all right, I'm tired of this. So I get in the shower. I'm shaving, shaving, shaving. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to shave the balls and everything. I'm going hard. So I get everything down to a slick. I go, I, I even go against the grain. Oh my God. Just on some parts to get it like, like baby. That hurts a little it bit. Sucks. Yeah. It gets, yeah. Get, get me out. Get me out of here. Get me the hell out of here. This girl, I used to hook up with her. Well, anyways, we kind of fell out of touch. You know, she's a little weird anyway. And I, I had these two girls lined up. The both girls canceled on me. So she shows up and she has gained like 80 pounds. <laughs> she gets up and you're like, here, put the Spider-Man mask on. I've always had a real kink for this. <laughs> I love Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, you take it, Spider-Man. <laughs> See, and they already doing it to me right now in the chat. I see it. Where is it at? Look, it's like, in, in, Enrico it says, you like swamp. No, that's not what I'm saying, you motherfucker. I'm saying it a little. You know, I, would, I would be in Vegas right now getting shot on by like nine dudes. Here's like, <laughs> for like two grand, bro. Let's go. Me. Let's yeah. do it. You gonna f*** on me? What the f*** is going on? I'd be going crazy. I'd be, I'd have an OnlyFans. Because your boy wants a Ferrari. I don't know how I get it. Z has just decided to just forget about me today. I guess this is where we're at in life. Okay. Everybody's forgot about me. Nick Ricada, Gary, and now Zia. I got nothing left. All I got is people in my chat. All I have is people in my chat. That's uh, Bill, William Baker. Thank you so much. I love you, William. I appreciate you, William. Here's for good luck in your next race. William, by the way, I doubt you're on the car, but you're going on my uh, my race car for Kansas, the Kansas race in May. I'm putting you on there, William Baker. I miss you. I feel like it's been a minute since I've seen your name pop up, dude. I hope you're doing well. Anyways, thank you, William Baker, for the first Red Boy of the stream, putting us 10% to Nick and Snake. Oh, my gosh. What a good time to be alive. Hey, how you doing, Malik Gurley? How you doing, Berserker, Victor Olmstead, 
all, all my bitches, I hope you're doing well. I have a hell of a show for you tonight. I'm going to talk about some very tough things. And one thing that's very, it's very spicy. I'm going to talk about it because fuck it. And uh, we'll deal with the fallout. But it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very, very strange. So I hope you guys enjoy that. We're going to have a real tough conversation about it and see where people in the chat lie. I think most of you are going to agree with me, but we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. Um, Billy Hatcher with the pink boy. Look at this man. Billy Hatcher. Can't wait to be on you. Our, <laughs> I can't be, wait to be with you in the frog car. Also, how dare Zia? How dare she? Typical damn women leaving you. That's what they do, man. I, don't, I just don't understand it. Thank you, Billy Hatcher. I appreciate you. I love you. Oh, my God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Billy Hatcher. You're the best. You're the pinkest of all time. And I really, really appreciate that. Get on it, dog on it. For all your support, always, you're going to be on the car. You're on every other damn car we do. So I appreciate you. Love you. Men Track says, Who are you again? JK, have fun in your races. The races are not fun. They're stressful. But once, once the green flag drops, that kind of goes away a little bit. Um, everything leading up to it's a nightmare. And then once you're there and you're doing the thing, you don't have time to be stressed about it anymore. Or you don't have, like, you're just in it. In it to in it to win it. Thank you, Mentrex. I love you. I appreciate you. Billy Hatcher, I love you. I appreciate you guys so much for getting us started fast as hell. You're too good to your boy. Too good. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, William says, how do you, you send a custom name? You can just tell, tell, tell me. Tell me whatever you want. It just can't be something that obviously won't pass approval, right? Like last month, we had people trying to get Osama bin Laden and shit on my car. And I'm like, yeah, that's obviously not going to fly. You know they checked this shit, right? <laughs> they checked this shit, right? So, uh, unfortunately. So, but yes, it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, Saul told Sia that the show was moved to Wednesday. She texts you and says you never tell her shit. That never happened. You a liar. You're a filthy liar. A filthy liar. <laughs> But uh, sorry, guys, my uh, so something hilarious. I was at the gym today and it was great. Great day. I feel good. And then I was on my way home from the gym and I just started sneezing and sniffling like a motherfucker. So I didn't really think I was out of the woods yet. It usually takes about a month for me to start stop sneezing and being terrible. So I never really truly recovered, but I'm here. So you're going to hear me sniffling a lot, man. It's going to be terrible. I'm not looking forward to it, but it's all good. Oh. Beep. Thank you. Appreciate you. Saddam was saying, yeah, could you imagine? So I got a bunch of topics lined up. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Um, and I'm excited for one of them. And one of them you, you probably, you, you've probably seen pop up, right? So <clears throat> Berserker says, cocaine running around your brain. All right. So uh, for people that don't know how cocaine works, I would weigh like 90 pounds if I was on cocaine. And also I would be kicked out of... Uh, um nascar because it's a sanctioned sport <laughs> that has a bi-monthly random drug test <laughs> you're on cocaine bro you're on cocaine cody i wish don't you know that that why stuff you, is bad you, for you no. Zia, why are you late i'm sorry i'm sorry what were you doing Zia? nothing none of your business what no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's my business i was just getting ready i was running like getting ready I got your text and I was like, okay, he hasn't sent the link yet. I have a little bit of time and I was like rushing around and then I got the link and I was like, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> Why is what's happening? What's, what's, your boobs are just getting bigger. My boobs are getting bigger. You're yeah, welcome. That's fine. I'm okay with that. You can just stay like that for the rest of the show. It's much better. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. This is the boobs of a 39 year old one. Oh my God. You're really, you know what, Cody? I appreciate that. Oh. I'm actually 42. Pull your pants up a little. I am. I have to it's get rid of. I have to hide my fupa. It's like flooping a little. It's fl it's flooping a lot, Cody. <laughs> Cody, you know how much weight I gained? You probably weigh like what? 125. 123. That's too much. That's too much. Yeah, because you're like five foot two. Yeah. Something. Yeah, it's hilarious. Adrian Robello says, "God damn it, Rex, huge. Look at that. See, even got me a super chat by having a giant titty." There are 32 triple D's. Thank you very much. Um, do, do you think there's women out there that get one breast implant? So they just have one giant titty? 
No, I don't think that exists. Although there was, there's a girl that I actually follow, a uh, cosplay girl who had, and she talks about it. She's very open about it. She had her breast done as soon as she turned 18 because hers were so uneven that it was like three cup sizes between each boob. So she had to go in to have that corrected. Why did she have to wait till she's 18? You can't get, uh, plastic surgeons won't do surgery on you before. I mean, there's got to be extenuating circumstances. Mm, dude, you have to wait till you're 18. And I don't know why exactly. Uh, I don't know why exactly. Um, but you can't get at 18. If you're going to get a boob job at 18, you have to get saline. You can't get silicone. You can only get silicone when you're 22, I believe. So what if you your labias were really long? And like, and I mean, dangerously long, like you were tripping over them and shit. <laughs> like, like they, they were get getting them, caught in your laces. Yeah. Could you not get them like trimmed or you have to wait, wait till you're 18? That I'm not sure. I've not looked into that. The boob thing is the only thing I know. <laughs> you can like literally <laughs> tie them around your waist on a belt. Yeah. Oh God. Imagine the smell. I feel like like long labias smell weird probably. Maybe. Like, does your labia smell weird? <laughs> I was just going down there. <laughs> are, your tits, are they long? They smell like, they smell like labias. Oh God, I'm not about that laugh. <laughs> it's I just don't understand why do some girls just smell like a like like a dumpster? That I don't know. People need to shower and take care of themselves. Cleanliness is important. I don't understand the people that don't take care of their their hygiene. That's an odd one. But have you ever been on birth control in your life? Yeah. So like there was a period of time in your life where you were just getting filled up like an oatmeal cream pie. Yeah. So that throws off the pH, right? I guess. I don't know. I don't remember that ever being a problem, though. Mm, interesting. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, Damocles says we need to get Nick in here to fat shame Zia for 10 minutes. I need it, Damocles. I need it so bad. This is what happens when Nick disappears. This happens. Yeah. Yeah. God I don't know. damn it. His, uh, Nick's fat shaming doesn't hit as hard because he's, he's so little. I know. He looks like a broomstick. He has a skinny mini. Something about it. Like when you look like a broomstick, it's no longer funny. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you you're like, to gain weight oh, for it to be funny. You're fat. I'm like, bro, you gotta like you gotta look <laughs> at least at least this normal to make make these jokes. <laughs> 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 like no shit. Every time I see Nick, I can hear the music. You know the music, the somebody in the chat come on please that's a good joke please tell me at least it. it's that and it's not the well yeah i would rather be like like same i'd rather be corpsey than fat for any day of the week. yeah yeah but yeah, i can yeah. fix that in like one day or like a week maybe i could like i dude i, I would gain 10 or 20 pounds in one of somebody in the chat come on you got my joke right domicles love you dude appreciate <laughs> you um tells from the crib sean see i knew sean would get it sean knows shit tells from the crib <laughs> i got i called him the crib keeper i want to <laughs> watch tales tales from the crypt again so it's so great man um sad lad chats has started to cut this week did really good until last night and tonight couldn't resist the whiskey it's always yeah. the whiskey that gets you but if everything else is good then that's actually still very impressive yeah, um, I've uh, I usually quit drinking on my cuts, but I I don't remember. It was like two cuts ago. I I drank still a little bit, and I got really fucking shredded. Yeah, Last, my this dad year, used I'd... to drink on his cuts, and he was fine. He just drank like vodka or tequila with water. Yeah, and I um like my most recent cut, I lost twenty five pounds, and I didn't Jesus. drink at all. And I sent you a picture of me shirtless. Remember, I was like, Lou, I'm, I'm... oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was like, I'm making a lot of progress, and then it. I fucking start eating pizza and shit. Sad lad, I appreciate you. Grifty says his punishment Zia should stay framed just like that. Oh no, Grifty. Just tits. I, don't do time. that to everyone. Just tits the oh, entire time. I, I actually sent out a set on my OnlyFans today of me <laughs> baby oiling them up. They're it's beautiful. It's a beautiful sight. They're all they're getting they're so, they're all nice and soft now, so they're getting all jiggly. I can I can jiggle them. It's nice. I like it. Are you doing butt stuff yet? I you see I I, I, I'm, we'll I keep hearing from multiple Sources that you're doing ass stuff. No. That sucks. We're going to get there. Relax. I'm easing in. <laughs> you just got to make sure your asshole is bleached, bro. I don't need it. It's just naturally like that. That is un un not, not true. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Nope. Mm -hmm. It looks like my color of my desk. What's the color of your desk? Black. It's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> if I only looked at your asshole and nothing else, I would assume you were... You were definitely like a black chick. Oh. 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. What? <laughs> There's an old episode of Tales from the Crypt with Brad Pitt in it? All right, I got to watch. I got to go back and watch that. I mm. I miss Tales from the Crypt, Goosebumps. I I got to I got to go down the rabbit hole again. Um there's there's an old episode of something that has Leonardo DiCaprio in it when he's a kid. And he's was like, he eating he's like Gilbert Grape? I I maybe Oh no, he no, was, that no, was, no, no. He was that's a that's matter. a movie. He was he was really good in that. No, no, no. There's a young kid Leonardo DiCaprio in um what was that movie? Not uh, not not movie, the show. The show with the Disney show with the guy who went on to be like a real Jesus dude. Oh my god, what was that show? Uh Growing Pains. Growing yes, pains, Monster yeah. Mash, Growing Pains. Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron. Yeah. 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 He got real Jesus-y. Why do people get Jesus-y? I don't know. It's so lame. I have my aunt got kind of Jesus-y, but she survived two um burst aneurysms and had oh, one more that got coiled. So that one I kind of understand. And she's not annoying Jesus-y. She just, you know, prays now and stuff. So that's cool. But other than that, I don't know. Drug addictions and stuff. I don't like look, dude. I have no problem with religious people at all no um, me neither as, especially as long as they're cool and that's just yeah. what they believe in i'm like yeah, yeah i think it's nice that they have something to believe in i'm totally yeah i think it's great um um and i don't <laughs> see either. myself i don't see myself any better or worse than anybody else um yeah. but i can't stand people that even though they know that you're secular they continue to use phrases in conversation and like in the form that they're, they assume that you're like a Christian or something. Like one of my friends was like, um, invited us, uh, like to a thing. And so I get invited to this thing and I'm like, yeah, I can't, I, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I could do that. And the, the person was like, it's like, what is the occasion? And the person was like, oh, we're just, uh, you know, we're all going to, you know, get together and sit around and talk and, uh, just celebrate the fact that, uh, Jesus blessed our life with so much love and we're going to celebrate him and Christ. And I'm just like, D why are you texting me this? Yeah, that's too much for me. I'm like, that's, if you would have, that's prevent cool. me from coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're prevent Same. me from coming. Getting this. <laughs> like, I don't mind. Like, that's what you do. It's great. Yeah, um, absolutely. But when you include certain like phrases and sentences in a conversation, including me, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? that That's like a, that's, that's no different. Then a Christian inviting his friend, like, like that's Middle Eastern, being like, "Hey, you want you should come to this thing this weekend." And it's like, "Oh, okay. What are you guys doing?" It's like, "Oh, we we're celebrating the the life of Jesus and how he blessed us uh, and all of our family with like love and joy." The Islamic guy would be like, "No, I'm not gonna to what are you talking about?" <laughs> Like, are or, you, you do realize I'm not part of this, right? Or like having a, that'd be like me inviting a Muslim to one of my family's barbecues where we emu a giant pig and being like, hey, you yeah. hungry? Yeah. <laughs> Come on it's, in. It's weird. It's weird. So, no, but um, uh, Sean says it sounds cultish. Yeah. So, so that's, um, I'm with Sean on both of those things. A hundred, I, I sure. like this Sean guy. If religion makes you a good person, cool, but don't use it as a veil for your shittiness. That's a thousand percent how sure. I feel. Um, sure. and then also, yeah, it sounds cultish. It's too culty for me. Like it's a hundred percent. I've gone to church and I'm like, this feels weird and it doesn't right. make me feel good. Um, dude, I'm right there with you. So, um, <laughs> but everybody, everybody that's like living in their religion, which is again, disclaimer, people like hear this and get pissed immediately, but people that are like parts of whatever religion or denomination, they always assume that everything else is culty and theirs is not. And then you right. hear, you just, all you have to do is hear somebody talk. And now look, I, I'll give you an example. I was at Anna's wedding, um, that Star Wars girl. Yeah. And it was a Catholic wedding and nothing against any of this kind of stuff. But that was, uh, apart from like screaming Christian pastors that are like screaming in your face and spitting in your face, apart from maybe that, um, it was easily the most culty thing I've ever been to in my life. Really? There was like all this different procedures that was completely off the wall. Now, look, I'm not, I've never been to a Catholic anything. So it was my first time there. And it's just like stuff would happen. And then like somebody brings over like a chalice. And then all of a sudden this guy just comes out of the shadows and he's like, like Jesus put a blah, blah, blah on our head, like badly singing. And like, I'm, and then like he would stop. And then the whole crowd of people would be like, like, Blessed in his spirit, under his eye, like all perfectly in unison. And I'm like, what the 
fuck is happening? That sounds really scary. <laughs> like everybody, there was like the lady beside me was just like reciting like with everybody the same like ending pieces to different things. And I was like, how do they know this by heart? <laughs> <laughs> they know this. And it would like, it was so straight. And then the preacher would randomly say just a phrase. He'd be like, blah, 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 blah. And then everybody's like under blah, his feet, blah. under his feet, above his eyes, eyes, eyes. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I gotta leave. This is fucking crazy. <laughs> like, like this. And then I'm like, do you not? Do you not? Feel, like, do you not see how this is like the most culty thing that's ever existed? It's hard like, when you're yeah. raised in it. I think is the thing. Like, I wasn't. My dad didn't raise me with any religion because he wanted me to decide for myself. But he's like, if that's something she's gonna find, I want her to find it on her own. And I did have a cousin that was super religious, and I so I did go to church a few times, and I. And I sat there and I listened to it and I, and I and I talked to him about it and I was kind of like, yeah, I don't buy it and this feels very culty and I don't like this. This doesn't make me feel good. This makes you feel good, okay? I don't All right, know why they didn't. Feel, it's not for me. I don't know why they didn't write better lyrics and flow for the music and Catholic stuff. When did it? When was it written? Fuck, a, a long time like, ago. Probably. It's a long time ago. There's, it's been through so many different uh, translations, but also there's so many different versions of the Bible, right? There's the King James Bible. There's the New Testament. There's the Old Testament. Like yeah. there's all kinds of. So I'm, I, I, I'm not really sure. Yeah, what I don't know. Um, goes with what is the other thing? It was just that. That was just that was the first time that I was like, wow, this feels really culty. And I was, you know, I'm 34 at this point, but um, no, oh, you're I just. You're, you're only I feel six like years it would, younger than me. <laughs> I, I felt like it would have been cooler, like a little bit better if they, if it was like the music and stuff was written better. And it was because it was very strange. Um, now, granted, uh, Cecil told me it was, it's a completely in a different language originally. Um, and they just completely one to one translated over into English. It's Latin. Yeah. There you go. So, um, and so it was very, very weird where it's just uh, the, like the, the priest would just be talking normally he's like we joined together these two bodies of blah 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 blah, 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 blah. and like he's just and then he, he just out of nowhere he's like we walk head in head we under the and i'm just like what the fuck no <laughs> yeah no. anything where you're chanting no. and drinking this? the body and blood of someone else i'm like this is a little uh what it was strange. Now, granted, I, now I've been going to when I was a teenager and a kid, I went to church, um, you know, all the time. That's what I did. And because, um, you know, I live in Alabama and it was just sermons. It was a, a preacher just preached. Sometimes they'd scream. Sometimes they wouldn't. And I didn't really ever like that either. Um, but it was still more like they just had sermons prepared and would speak the sermon and then you left. That's it's always. Of, I feel like it's kind of cool if they're just trying to like ha uh, teach a, a cool, a good lesson <laughs> about how to treat human beings. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, like treating your fellow neighbors and and this and that. Sometimes if there's a, a nice message that comes from it, but I still very much maintain that you shouldn't need it to be a good person. Sure. Sure. And uh, yeah. also, I think that if it's something that and, and, and this is where it's organized religion that gets to me. It's not having something to believe in. I think that 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 actually in itself is really good. Yeah. Um, I think having something to believe in is good. It's probably very comforting in life. I think it's a very nice thing. It's the organized part of it where it's used for power, corruption, manipulation. Uh, it's just to cause wars in the name of religion, but really it's for something else. They use it. It's that kind of stuff where I'm just like, ah, do we need that? I don't think yeah. we need that. Um, William, I love you. appreciate you. Good night, my friend. Um, so a really good point because I've always thought, I've always thought, and Disparu put it to me like best, but I always thought that there is there's really not a, really a point. Um, people should just be good, like you were saying. But Disparu was like, well, it doesn't really matter what you believe. If you're brought up in America, you were brought up in a Christian society, and subconsciously, subconsciously, yeah, he was saying that, and I'm not you, sure I buy it to be honest well, with it's, you. It's all every moral and like fabric of like. But not really, because even if religion doesn't exist before religion existed, a lot of these morals still existed. I don't think you need a lot of them to existed. have morals. A lot of them existed. Like, we all know what's good and bad. Rel well, the thing about religious that I find funny is it didn't shape morals, I don't think. This is, I, I know what he's saying, and I just, I'm not sure I agree with that, because, um, the thing with religion is, and, and most of religions, is you can still do those things as long as you repent, you will be forgiven. 
So what is it really teaching you? No. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I kind of see, I, I see both sides of it because <laughs> why is it that the Middle East and Africa are some of the most dangerous places you can go? And it's just the way of life there, but it also just happens to be one, almost one centralized religion and that's Islam. Right. But in Western countries, it's like hyper Christian and you just, no one saw in your head off in the street in, uh, in Alabama. Not anymore. What do you mean not anymore? People there was no head People off of. used to get stoned in the name of religion a hundred percent because sure, they were gay. Or and sure. look, this is not extremism. In Alabama. No, not in not, Alabama. No, not in Alabama. But my point <laughs> is, I don't think that without religion there wouldn't be <clears throat> morals and human decency. And I think the reason <laughs> for that is because hum humans are either the, and this is across the board. Some people are, it's, and, but it's not so black and white though, right? Like some people are going to be shitty regardless of whether they're religious or not. I know people who sure. aren't religious, who are wonderful people. And I know people who are super religious, who are complete garbage people and, and just absolutely suck. But I think that that's just kind of the point of it. Some people are going to be good and know that have morals. Like, yes, we know murder and grape is bad. Obviously. I don't think you need religion to tell you that. Cause also religion said that you could grape your wives cause they're your wives. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, I don't think that religion plays into morals as much as people think it does. I, I'm so, I'm not saying it, it's entirely at play. I'm saying it just, it, there's, there's an unequivocal effect that like it reverberates through the last couple of centuries here. Whereas sure. grapes not looked down upon in the Middle East, not as much. It is obviously. not. <laughs> it is and not. but it is here. And there's certain things stoning, like you said, stoning women for adultery or something that still happens in the Middle East now. Yeah, it does. It doesn't happen Wild. here. True. Um, so I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, I think it is. Uh, I do think it's hard for me to. <sighs> it's one of those things where when people ask me like why I am not religious or specifically a Christian. I'm in Alabama, so it's only going to be. Christian. It has to happen there for you, right? Uh, it's going to be Christianity, right? And they'll be like, what? Like, I just don't see how you could not believe in something. And I'm like, well, they're like, wouldn't you just kill people if you didn't? I'm like, that's not how that works. Um, but I'm, I just tell them that you don't believe in 3,199 religions. Yeah. I just don't believe in 3,200 of them. I believe in one less than you. You know, that's it because everybody thinks they're like, right. You know, that's um, the thing. Everybody thinks that then they're very, very sure that their religion is the correct one. For me, it's not even that I think it's 100 percent wrong. Um, I just don't know. And I think that realistically, anything that we could actually fathom on our in our brains is not what it is at all. If something like that, if there is a higher power, if it does exist, I don't think it's anything that we could wrap our minds around in sure. the slightest. And I certainly sure. don't think it has anything to do with any of the organized religions. And but I don't. I don't like the only fallback question to disprove a secularism. It's the same question that everybody asks. And it's like, oh, well, how did so how did something come from nothing? And I'm like, just because we don't understand it now doesn't automatically right. mean that your Middle Eastern religion is correct. Right. And also, how did something all, come from nothing? Like, how did how did the God exist? Where did they come from? Like yeah. you could ask now, that question. Back and back and back, it's and just, um, I think it's I think it's just it's really really it's really really hard to be able to fathom. Especially it's hard to be able to pre time fathom. time very very hard to fathom. Let me hit some of these super chats. Uh, super chats. William Baker with a giant pink boy. We are a quarter in to naked snake. Already twenty five percent into the snake. Don't get me started on goosebumps. Grew up on it. Thank you so much. I William. love. Goosebumps I love it. So I watched much, through William. all of Goosebumps again recently. Oh, I still have actually not still. My husband, like a few years ago, bought me like twenty of the Goosebumps books and and fear, the Fear Street books because I was lamenting that I couldn't find any. I was like, why? Well, every time I go to bookstores, I just kind of see if I can find some to get them because it's so nostalgic. And he bought me a bunch, and you know, you can read through them in like a day. They're they're short and they're meant for kids. So much fun to go back and read the nostalgia of it. It feels so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, William Baker. I love you. I appreciate you. Um, you're goaded as hell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and like a lot of people are arguing in chat, they're going to be, you know, this is why, or this is why not God exists, blah, blah, blah. And that's not really the conversation. Um, I'm sure that what we may, uh, think could be a godlike figure could be something that we can't even like fathom, like a fifth dimensional being. We couldn't mm -hmm. even, we couldn't even fathom it. 
But or I can this guarantee could be a simulation in the higher power. Sorry, go sure, on. This sure. is what happens. My brain goes yeah. off the deep end. I could guarantee you that whatever power that may have or may not have created everything is not the Middle Eastern text that was written like oh, two thousand years so. ago. It's not. It's it's because if, if it is, then like you have a you have a a very dangerous and angry, vengeful like person or being that created everything. I don't know. It's, it's just, a, it's just a terrifying monolith of a, of a being. Um, and I'm like, nah, it's like, you just can't understand it. It's like, that's ah, fine. I don't really want to. I'm, I'm good. Gonna, yeah. You guys I'm enjoy. No, I'm too dumb anyway. <laughs> you know, says, was Catholic K-12. I can understand why you think that Catholic's kind of culty, but the mass was in Latin until the sixties. Think about that. Wow. Yeah, I, I think I need to hear some, I, I need to go to a Latin mass, man. I think that might be a little bit cooler. Um, Kaba Ka, that's it. will be like, see, now everybody's saying Latin. Mass <laughs> there you shit. go. <laughs> everybody's saying lap mass is the shit. Thank you, Kyle. I appreciate you. Uh, Adrian says Mexico is getting in a fight with Ecuador. It involves an assassination of the president candidate and communism. What the hell are you yeah. talking about? Adrian's just having a tough time down in Mexico. I'm sorry, Adrian. Everybody's just terrible. assassinating everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. I appreciate it. Nobody you. wants communism for the love. I mean, maybe some people do, but they're that's something I think we know for certain that communism. Every country that's tried it, and I love the argument for that is always, well, but they, mm -hmm. you know, they're not doing it right. What other way is there to do it? Well, it the only people that want communism are upper upper middle class white kids that have never really had to work or put towards. But they don't want co government. communism. That's the problem. They don't because they still want to have all the money that they have magically, while everyone else also has money. Well, they 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 can only see themselves in the exact same situation, just under a different like in a different government structure. They don't really, they, 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 oh, well, things will just be the same, except everybody will be happy. It's like, no, that's not how it works. Thank you. Sad lad chat says, are you, are you saying you're not going to join the crusade to take back the Holy Land Cody? I'm disappointed. <laughs> Thank you, sad lad chat. I appreciate you. Um, that's that's be, disappointing. Um, can we go back to talk about TNT? TNT. T what is TNT? Tits and tits. Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> What's TNT? <laughs> TNT. I, that's oh, just ACDC. Yeah. Or Tales exactly. from the Crypt. No, that's T TNT. Oh. Tales from the Tits. Tales from the Tits. I want you guys to see something real quick. And um, did you guys see that fucking Myron Gaines went absolutely batshit insane? No. Who is this? Tell me everything. I, oh, he's the he's the dude on he's Fresh and Fit podcast. So. Look, I don't have a, a negative or positive opinion at all about Myron Gaines. Um, I think he, you know, I think the Fresh and Fit podcast was a very s solid at first. I, I enjoyed watching clips from it. And I actually started, I watched a few of their past streams uh, right when I heard about it. This was over a year ago, easily. And the, the podcast went from I'm rich. I focus on myself and I build my own self wealth and respect. I go to the gym and I also like fuck countless bitches. That was like the kind of the point. And we don't, you know, we don't wife up bitches that are whores. That's basically the whole point of the podcast. And it's kind of turned into like a weird gay thing where, and I haven't <laughs> watched it in a while, but the last time I watched a clip from it, it was doing the whole, oh, we no longer fuck women. Eh that's gross and we just hang out with our homies also by the way islam is the way and i'm like yeah i'm not watching this anymore <laughs> how do we go full gay like out of nowhere but anyways Man, I didn't know that. So, so i haven't caught up i haven't kept up with it but myron got in a fight with the quartering on twitter and the quartering is a whole other thing entirely um but the quartering is really easy about shrugging off criticism because he doesn't give a fuck and Myron Gaines, apparently, so what's going on right now is his co-host on the podcast, uh, Fresh, knocked up a Asian hooker, right? Am I getting <laughs> this right? Okay. And he was caught, like, threatening her and like, trying to force her to get an abortion. And this obviously looks bad when you're uh, totally pro-life. So. That's why I never, I kept, this is. That 100% is why I never trust anyone that's staunchly uh, uh, so about anything because they're all fucking hypocritic, uh, hypocritic, full of shit assholes. Hippocratic. Always. That's not the word I meant to use. Hypocrites. Like but a doctor? Like the Hippocratic Oath? Nope, not that one. <laughs> 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 that was not right. <laughs> no, dude. They're all just... giant hypocrites. <clears throat> yeah. So, and also, yeah. So 
he went on his stream and just started fucking freaking out, being very, very emotionally, completely emotionally, like unhinged. And I'm going to play it for you. So people in the chat and you can see it and see what you think about this, because I don't like I said, I don't have any I don't have any, you know, quarrels with a guy. But if you're going to be leading this like extremely stoic movement, that's about men. Um, the whole point of like stoicism is being extremely cool under emotional pressure. <laughs> and this dude completely broke. He's yeah. like screaming into his fucking SM7B. And these things don't distort unless you put them in your mouth and sc got, like scream. Yeah, and it's distorting. Microphone. Like it's clipping so hard because he's just screaming. Um, and it doesn't really make much sense. But before we get into that, let's hit this $300 Canadian boy from Maple. Invictus! What? Damn. Damn. Invictus. Hot damn, my friend. Halfway Ooh. to Naked Snake in one hit. Whew. I wiped my nose. Thank you. Maple Invictus, let's put you on the car for Kansas. Three times. Maple Invictus. By the way, guys, I will be unveiling the frog car live next thursday i think i'm pretty positive it's going to be thursday i'll be in north carolina i'm flying out and we're going to pull the sheet off the frog car and you're going to see the frog car live and it's going to be right before we take it to talladega and by we i mean the team because i will not be doing that and um they're going to load it on their their diesel or their trip their fucking 18 wheeler take it down there and we're just gonna we're gonna run talladega it's gonna be awesome so uh but i'll be unveiling the frog car live on thursday Chickles. maple invictus Thank you so much. Says, hey there. Did you guys see that Craig is trying to buy back Screw Attack or at least the archive videos? I asked him if he had thought about passing on the torch of Screw Attack to a new creator so he could work on other projects. What do you guys think of the situation? Enjoy this money. Enjoy this money. Well, I appreciate you. I'm. A, it's like I'm a stripper. And race and the race. Thank you so much, my friend. The car we are racing at at Talladega is going to be really, really fast. Really, really fast. Um, the, the frog car? The frog car. It's got the, the big ass. Car. It's got the uh, the Ilmore engine in it. Yeah, it's all fresh. It's going to be a fast car, so I'm very excited for that. Um, real quick, Whiskey Sour says I'm on the car. Uh, Whiskey Sour, you are on the car. Um, thank you, Maple Invictus. Uh, I think Craig should buy Screw Attack back because, I mean, it's his, right? I mean, <laughs> not technically, but still. Um, he created it, so I think he should have it back. I think that'd be great. I'm 100% I'm all about it. As far as patching on, uh, passing on the torch, maybe he could appear on a Screw Attack, a screw attack channel and then have other hosts for it, and they run the whole thing. That'd be pretty cool. Thank you, Maple. I love you. I appreciate you. You are goaded as hell. Thank Amazing. you, thank you, thank you. Halfway to Naked Snake already. Thank you. 500 away. K Crane says, are NASCAR cars manual or automatic? They're manual. They, they're, they have a very specific transmission. It's like a, it's like a, a dog box. What I think that's what they call them. Um, you don't use a clutch or anything. It's just a four-pattern H. Uh, transmission you just pull it in the gear down at it and just fuck you don't use the clutch unless you're rolling off first all right boys let's play this clip from our and freaking the hell out it's gonna be fun let's do this z i'm staunchly for big staunchly for bigs staunchly for big boobies yes i texted you today and you didn't fucking respond how oh, dare you? we gotta talk about that wow Oh my god! I'm, I'm done. I'm, you pressed me out out of nowhere. <laughs> Sorry. Oh god! What the fuck? No, no, it's not that crazy. It was a joke. It was, <laughs> it was a joke. The background of my phone is my R8. <laughs> it's, it's I believe that. I know. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, thank you, deranged. I appreciate you, dude. Um, oh fuck, that's funny. All right, so let's play this video real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. You don't really, we don't need to watch the whole video. Um, he just screams that he has money. He's like, I got six million dollars. Oh, like, right. Congratulations, I'm like, sir. I'm like, that's definitely not going to go over well. Um, so uh, I love you, Reagan. Oh, Mudbug on Rumble with a hundred dollar Rumble rant. So, <laughs> all right, Mudbug. <laughs> Mudbug says, "Howdy, folks. Zia, overalls, please." Oh, I have overalls. I let's can put, put them on. Let's put oh, mud dog, mud bugs are you on the car, bro? We're putting you on there again. Thank you, mud bug. Oh, I put times one dirt. Mud bug. Thank you, mud bug. I love you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, let's pull up this video, mud bug. Uh, and let's uh, oh, I'm already got it pulled up. Zia's just gone. Okay, 
Here we go. So listen to Myron tripping balls. I mean, he's going full on just unhinged mode right here. Listen to this shit. Anything you guys can learn from this fucking podcast, learn this. We've been through hell together. He's almost like, it sounds like he's almost like crying almost. He's like getting choked up, you know? And the whole point of stoicism is to not be controlled by your emotions. And this is kind of the opposite of what's going on here. We had people come at us. We've had death threats at us. People fucking laugh at every time we fucking go through some bullshit. People make allegations on us. People have tried to absolutely fucking destroy us. And you know who was around me the whole fucking time? These fucking guys. So you motherfuckers can say whatever the fuck you want to say. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stand by the guys that stand by me. Because you... And it uh, that, that, that was actually... I guess that was the very end of it. We need to have the longer screamy version. Because <laughs> he didn't scream enough. And a lot of you motherfuckers are jellyfish. No fucking spine. And that's the reason why a lot of you motherfuckers are fat, triple chin, neck bearded, pieces of shit, fucking dorks with no money. And no one fucking respects you. Because you motherfuckers don't stand for nothing. If I stand with fresh, I die with fresh. It is... What it is, okay? It is what it is, you motherfuckers. Oh, shit, it's getting shaky. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave. I got 20 fucking real estate properties so I can tell motherfuckers, fuck you. My net worth is over six fucking million. I get money residually. I don't fucking need to do this shit, and I don't need to fucking sell my soul. I stand with my fucking friends, period, all right? Some of you motherfuckers need to get a fucking spawn, you jellyfish SpongeBob and a fucking pineapple. <laughs> Um, maybe it was more, uh, maybe it was more performance than anything, but screaming that you have $6 million is so lame. It's so lame. I dare say it's gay. Like there's, I don't know. I don't, there's no situation where you could ever scream. I have $6 million. Like it just sounds like really lame. You know, if you had like 200 million, maybe you could say that, but not scream it. But six hundred six million dollars, that's kind of like not not a lot. And I don't know why he's screaming about six million. I don't know. It just seems very, very weird. Very, very strange to me. I don't really like it. Um, but I do feel like this is gonna be a meme for a while. Luckily, uh, on the internet, right? Luckily on the internet, you can pretty much survive anything as long as you didn't do something real fucked up, right? Just real fucked up. Oh no. Is your overalls not connected with your boobs? They're just too big. Too big. Too goddamn big. Too goddamn big. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't realize how huge they are until I like look at a photo or something, and then I'm like, oh, they're really big. <laughs> <laughs> that never happens to me with my penis. <laughs> wow, look how big this is. No, no, it's not. It's kind of sad, actually. I'd be all about it. I love how somebody's like yelling at me um, because they don't think uh, they don't think Greta Thornburg's net worth is high, and she her actual net worth is rumored to be around eighteen million dollars. You know, the activist girl that gets arrested shit. on camera. She's always getting arrested on camera, like every every other week. Um and um. <sighs> There's records and rumors that she her net worth is around $18 million. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. That's fine. That's cool. I wish I had $18 million net worth. Hell the yeah. The is, is that it makes her, it, 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 it takes away from her activism because why, why do you have $18 million? Give away 17.5 of it. You're right. And mm -hmm. um, if you really believe the shit you believe, and she does it, it's all, it's all for money. That's the whole point. Yeah, and like I'd probably protest too if you gave me eighteen million dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. There's not a lot I wouldn't do for eighteen million dollars. Correct. It's a, so, it's a short list. Yeah, I'm I'm not over here on my soapbox being like I'm such a good person. Money can't buy me. No money can buy me. Up to an extent, there are still things I wouldn't do, but it's a short list. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm I'm right there with you. So, um, but there's people that are like you're lying, and they they staunchly defend that she doesn't have a high net worth yeah, because sure. it makes it all look like bullshit. You could yeah. totally roll with the fact that you have a high net worth and you also do this activism. Activism. Just own it and move on. But yeah. people that for some reason support Greta, and I'll never understand why anybody, even if you are totally all about some climate shit, yeah. you standing, like you support, overtly supporting Greta is still lame because she's a kid. 
she's not really a kid now, but no, but you're she right. She went, is. Yeah. When she, she, well, she's, she, I mean, she's, I mean, in comparison to our old asses, but when she first she's popped right. onto the scene, she was like an, uh, kind of an early teenager and there's all these world leaders propping her up. And I'm like, why are we listening to a fucking kid? Who, who gives a, fu- it's a kid. Who cares? When I was yeah. 16, I was borderline retarded. I was a hundred percent retarded. Yeah. Like I was the <laughs> stupidest person on earth. And you know what I'm saying? Like, and th- I don't know why we're listening to a kid and I don't understand why people just, just staunchly defend her so hard. Um, she's just a dumb kid and she's, yeah, she's going after money and fuck it. Who cares? Like yeah. I would do. It's just own it. It's so silly to me. Why are they not own it? I've never understood the non owning it like part of Christian or not, uh, <laughs> and not the the of amassing wealth. I'm all about it. If I somehow if I signed a contract tomorrow and I made ten million dollars, I would tell everybody immediately. Like in, I'll be on a, tr- a stream and I'd be like, "Yeah, dude, ten million dollar contract. Hell yeah, let's go." And I'd be like, "Yeah, this is great as fuck." And of course, there'd be people in the chat, people on Twitter, "You saw my scam sellout," and I'd be like, "Damn straight." And that'd be the end of it. <laughs> like, hell yeah, you know? yeah. If someone's like, "Oh, you sold out," I'd be like, "Hell yeah, I did." <laughs> Kiss my rich ass. No, do it again. <laughs> I'm um, like, no. Yeah, do this, no problem. <laughs> Noah Sanders says mandatory fun day in Huntsville is in Huntsville. You should hit him up and have him on mandatory fun day. Um, that would be a killer show. Can't wait for the Tim Cast car. Stay blessed. Send me like a DM reminding me of that because I don't um I don't know who that is, but that'd be great. I'm all about it. Thank you, Noah. I appreciate you. Maple Invictus with a pink boy. says i think all these red pill youtubers and these people who have to show off their wealth or the women they get because they think that it makes them more man are clowns from andrew tate to this motherfucker they're all clowns dude i could not agree with you more maple invictus i'm 100 percent right with you um yep. there is nothing there's nothing cool about like overtly flaunting oh yeah i have 19 bitches and i have a million dollars it's like you can talk about stuff and experiences. That's what I've always done. You know, I've talked about Tinder and fucking bitches and all exactly. these stories. But it comes from a, a genuine place. There's a well, huge difference. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, th- I feel like that starts to borderline insecure. When you start screaming and acting like a child and like trying to... When you start screaming your credentials in any fashion, it's because you're insecure. It's like, uh, it's, it's, it's like when you meet a woman you know, like this in her mid twenties. And the first thing she tells you is that she's working on her masters and she's worked developing this and she's uh, doing this at her job. And she's, she's, she's actually, you know, everybody's just blown away by, you know, how much she, you know, handles and how smart she is. And, you know, she's a scientist calls herself a scientist unironic, unironically. That's unlikable and lame. That's never been cool. I watched a sh- uh, TV show recently. It was a solid show, but it was, you know, there was the, some of the stuff was a little on the nose. Um, what was it called? I watched it literally a week ago. Um, Three Body Problem. Is that what it's called? So I watched this show called Three Body Problem. And it's about these, it's about like this alien shit. And I, it was a really cool show. But God, the casting and how it's written is so lame. Um, the, the, the first scene is there's two women and they're drinking in a bar. And of course, they're both supermodels. And especially one of them. One of them is like over the fucking top runway supermodel, right? But also it's the trope where she's supermodel scientist. Like she's like the smartest lady on our, on the planet. And she's also a scientist. That's like the, or she's also the hottest lady, lady on the planet. I, I've always thought the trope um, like supermodel scientist is so lame. God, it's, it's lame. It exists at about... Zero point zero 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 one two percent. I have actually seen like doctors where you look at these doctors, these women that are doctors, and you're like, Jesus Christ, how the fuck do you look like that? And you're also a doctor. I've seen it maybe twice. Yeah. So yeah. it's out there. It's so fucking rare. It's and not I, even funny. And I'm talking, you're talking like beautiful. I'm yeah. talking this lady is quite literally like top three women in the entire world. Supermodel thin no, because- supermodel has little, a little bitty, like little tiny abs. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Like model proportion bodies. Also scientists. So um, the very opening scene, this guy walks up and he's like, it's just that fl- I knew it was going to be this way. You know, Netflix, uh, like, he walks up and he's like a, kind of a drunk band guy. And he's like, what do you guys do? And he's like, Oh, let me guess. And he's obviously going to say something derogatory, like a nurse, even though nurse isn't a bad profession. 
That's and they're, they title. both condescendingly tell them, tell him in a very really detailed and um, overcomplicated way that they're both scientists. And I'm just like, oh my god, I don't give a fuck. Just make them likable. And is it necessary? No. They always make women so unlikable in these these films. And throughout the show, the Asian lady got a little bit more likable. But every guy on the show was stupid as fuck. And every girl is super scientisty. And there's one character I liked. His name it's the guy that plays Sam in Game of Thrones. And mm. he's oh, I love that guy. He's super smart. And he like joins the Asian girl to like figure out a problem. And he keeps going through like the stages of figuring out a problem. But the whole it's weird because he never figures anything out. It's always her like figuring everything out. And he's just standing beside her being like, oh wow. Like, like he doesn't do anything. And I'm like, and then of course he dies immediately. So um it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good show. It's just damn. It's it had so many overt things, and I was just waiting. And of course, like one of the kids yeah. is talking about their boyfriend for no reason. Um, you know how it is when you if you get your Netflix show like greenlit, there has to be something in there. Like the kid, there's like no nothing provokes it. It's just a kid is sitting there talking to his dad, and then randomly just brings up his boyfriend because you know he's gay, obviously. And then he's like, oh okay. And then it just didn't never talks about it again. <laughs> like, it's just, I guess we have to have that in there. It's like the lesbian kiss. You got to have it uh, to click the box. So some mysterious bank uh, overseas will fund your project. Those well, it's like, best. you got to kind of wonder who they're making this, this for like, look, I, I understand there are a lot of gay and lesbian people everywhere and there are trans people too. It's, it's a very Not small it. percentage, but that's Not still, it. you know, a decent sized number. Is it really such a significant number that those are the people that are watching your movie? No one else cares. No, like, I got, it's, it's not about any of that. It's of about, course it isn't. It's about destabilizing the West. That's what it's always been about. Thank you, Maple Invictus, by the way, for your pink boy. Thank you so much. You've been killing it today. We are 450 or yeah, 450 until fight or sorry, neck and snake. I've been <laughs> drinking. I've drank a half of a claw. <laughs> uh, thank you maple so much kid kid flash nacho says zia i live in clifton new jersey can i come over and oil you up and massage you i'll bring donuts you had me with donuts i i was you, in clifton what what i said as long as you massage her <laughs> with your penis <laughs> with your penis um yeah. i was in clifton um like a like a, a month ago maybe last month i don't know not that long ago i was in clifton having lunch it's a nice area i like it that's so funny I got my hanky in my face thank you so much clip flash Johan says women are the root of man tonight. You. I don't That's believe you, Johan. Women, um I believe Johan. Women can be like bring such happiness to your life. The issue is, is eventually they'll take it all away. Uh that's just Same what they're gonna do. can be said for dudes. That's just everyone. No it's bitch. Just people. No bitch. No, oh no, you're right. That never happens. It listen, just because something <laughs> happens sometimes doesn't mean <laughs> sometimes. It's Sometimes oh, it's like over 80% of relationships are ended by the woman, you dick bag. Yeah, but that's not that you don't know the reasoning behind it. I knew you were gonna oh dude, all women say this. Yeah, Everyone of course. Some little soft asses. You all say the same shit. Well, it's what? because the guy did a bad thing. Fuck y'all. So okay, so we just let it go, get walked all over a tree like shit. Who cares, right? We don't even know if that's the issue. You're just yeah, saying that. I'm just mm. exactly. Bitch. No, it's women are like, I need something <laughs> else. I need something in life, and I'm just not. I'm just or... I'm just tired of the whole men that I I staunchly, staunchly say the same thing about people who generalize men. I think it's so fucking stupid. We gotta stop doing it. Men this and women this. Like, nah, people are trash or they're cool, and there's it's it's all it's all over the place. I, I hate the whole thing of like I think that fucking fe the feminist shit uh, bitches that do that like oh men are only looking for men only it's all all that it's so obnoxious just stop it's obnoxious on both sides and it's not fixing or helping anything and also it's not true a lot of the time when it's become when it's more than just anomalies when there are so many anomalies it's not an anomaly anymore it's becoming the regular no women are bad they're evil that's <laughs> sure. what's happening <laughs> sure. oh. <laughs> All right, uh, I gotta, I gotta, we gotta talk about something. <laughs> what are we gotta talk about? What are we talking about? Look, man. Okay, real quick. Uh, you've heard about the Romeo and Juliet thing, right? What Romeo and Juliet thing? So Tom Holland is in a production of Romeo and Juliet, and of course he's Romeo because he's cute and adorable and in mm -hmm. good shape. He is very adorable. He's like a, he's like a little, like a little pocket British. The like woman him. that's playing Juliet. Mm -hmm. Um. It looks like a fucking monster. I'm sorry. I gotta see this. I'm sorry. She quite literally looks like a fucking monster. I need and to see. Of course, she's black, um, which is fine. There's a lot of beautiful black women on earth. 
Sure, uh, but was Juliet? They chose, they chose the only one that has a mustache and looks like her name is Tyrone. <laughs> and <laughs> is it racist to be like this person is just looks like is just not attractive? No, because people are saying it's racist. No, say she's not attractive. And I'm that's like, no. stupid. <laughs> no, and I'm like, you guys are just lying. If you say this woman is attractive, you are fucking lying. You're lying. Shh. Oh my god. I just this is this is this is brutal. Brutal Zia. I'm trying so hard not to be mean. Um no, do it. Be mean. Like yeah, look, somebody's like caught, like the and these are obviously botted. This is all botted shit. I'm I'm seeing likes on Twitter from random shit. It's all botted all the time. There's no way 50,000 people she's genuinely beautiful. Beautiful. So, Y'all are just so, racist freaks. I was going to say what Kella said. That was, I was trying, I just didn't want to be mean and say it, but that was what I was, that was my first thought. Look, the issue is, is saying people are racist because they don't find her attractive is reducing her to only a race, which in itself is racist. There is beautiful black women that Agreed. exist. God, did you ever see Halle, Ber Halle Ber Berry when she was like 25? She's, oh my god! She still looks. She's still, I'd still yeah, she's suck still a fart out of her ass. She's yeah, still hot. But at thir at twenty five, yes. bro, I yeah. would have died for that woman. And yes. she just happens to be black. She just happens to be black. No, and agreed. like I'm sorry, but like I said, this chick looks like her name would be Tyrone. <laughs> it's just it's just too much. That's it's what I was gonna say. That's what I was gonna say. And it said somebody's like, see, people are actually saying, bro, you're just straight up fucking lying. You're just lying. Look at this lady. That's yeah, Kelly lady. Kelly Rowland. There you go. Hell yeah. Beautiful She's lady. gorgeous. Gabrielle Union. I mean, the list goes on. You could keep naming people. I also think Lupita, I don't know how to say her last name, also gorgeous. Like, it, 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 you're absolutely right. It's not a race thing at all. Yeah. Now, the original post is pretty, pretty fucked up, but it's, it's pretty fucked up. It says her looks would pass during slavery, but not now. <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. No. Sweet Jesus. Yeah. But no, uh, look, man, the only reason this exists, in my, in my humble ass opinion, is because they are trying to create outrage. Because outrage causes more clicks, more social media mentions, which is more enticing to people uh, uh, investors. That's the only thing I can fathom in this whole situation. The reason they keep casting Has fucking gar like gargoyle ass chicks and like miscasting them, by the way, completely miscasting them. Mm -hmm. The reason they're doing it is to piss people off online so they talk about it, which in turn brings up social media mentions, which is very, very good for investors. That's what I think it's about because it's, 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 it's the whole uh, positive uh, and negative press is still press. It's the entire reason why I think Bud Light did the whole Dylan Mulvaney thing because it created, dude. No one, I, I haven't even heard of anybody mention the phrase Bud Light since I was like fourteen, and now I'm thirty two, and all of a sudden every single person on the fucking planet, people in Africa that don't even speak English, are talking about Bud Light. That's mm -hmm. a big deal. Now, maybe it's not leading to ROI, but it was never about ROI. The entire reason people sponsor shit, very, very, mis a big misconception. A lot of people don't actually understand this. The, re the reason people, companies, or anybody sponsors anything is not ROI. It is not return on investment. It is for name and brand recognition. It always has been. It has never been about ROI. The average ROI... Um, on any sponsorship or any campaign like that is less than like 0.07% for everything across the board. NBA, when NBA is sponsored by Nike or it's like it's like uh, the NBA finals sponsored by Coca-Cola, that does not increase Coca-Cola sales. What it does is, is somebody on TV with 36 million people watching is saying sponsored by Coca-Cola. Name recognition means more to investors than hard solid profit if profit means anything then GameStop's fucking stock would be negative a thousand dollars right now but it's not that's the whole point and people like message me or like to put on twitter wow i can't believe tim pull sponsor your car like he's like he's never gonna make any of that money back and i'm like it's not about roi it's about name recognition now everybody that is ha has anything to do with nascar is gonna be like oh shit tim cast yeah that's how that works yeah it's 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 to lead to attention and name recognition which over the course of five years name recognition is a very important tool to growing a business it's not about return an roi the next day it never has been 
No, it's it's too late. It's down the line. It's it's future ROI. But you're right, brand recognition. Because when you think of, I guess when Ziploc did it in a good way, or or Kleenex. When you ask for a Kleenex, it's that Kleenex is a brand. It's actually a tissue. But when you think of a tissue, you always think Kleenex. You don't think any other brand. And and it's sort of like that. Yeah, band aid. -Aid. Exactly. Band aid is a brand. It's not the product. Yeah. People Absolutely. call it adhesive bandages, band aids, no matter <laughs> what the brand is. Yes. Yep. That's the whole point. It's always about name recognition. And that is yeah. how this works. Um, and I think that's what they're trying to do um, because this is always Western productions, right? Mm-hmm. You're not going to see this in Asia. This is going to be a Western production. And what matters more than any anything else in Western culture currently as far as in uh, in any circles that run with money? It's social media. The best way to get social media mentions is to cause outrage bait, which is what this is. That is why they cast that chick with the freaking really far away, far away eyes as, as uh, Little, Little Mermaid. Mermaid. Yeah. This, it, the movie didn't awesome. break even, mm-hmm. but everybody knows about the little mermaid everybody knows that there was a remake happening everybody knows um that disney did this thing so it caused social media mentions you can go there there they have people right now that are on the computers going to social media mentions and looking up oh god damn disney's little mermaid was mentioned a billion times like in the last month the month prior to that before this marketing campaign the little mermaid was mentioned 27,000 times on the internet that's a big deal. If if I had, you know, my if I have 200,000 subs on YouTube and no one knows who I am. And for some reason, the next day every single person on earth that has a Twitter or a f- Facebook or anything and they just put a status that says Camelot 331, I won't make any money overnight. There'll be articles everywhere the next day and then for some reason, people will talk about it for three days and everybody on the planet for a short period of time will know who I am, which could lead to opportunities later. Mm-hmm. That's the point. Um, but no, people it's, people have always been really, really strange about that. We're going to need everyone on Twitter to tweet out Camelot 3 through N, but also ZLN. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Harris says, Sana Lethin from AVP is amazing. Even at 52. Oh, we got to pull that up. Hold on. I was going to say, I don't know who that is. Hold Show on. Me. Let's pull this up. I, won't, yeah, I hope she's hot as hell. Karis has pretty good, uh, I feel like he has good uh, taste. Good taste. Sa- Sana Lathan. Oh, I remember this chick. Yeah, she's adorable. She's Let adorable. Hold on, God damn it. I'm... God damn it, Cody. Yeah, she's she's just really cute. She, I remember, maybe not an AVP. She was in something else that I remember. She's, I can't remember what it was in. She's in something from a long time ago, but she's a beautiful girl, yeah. What's AVP? I am um... Alien versus Predator. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, thank you, Karis. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you so much. Disco Cobra with the Pink Boys. See, I'm actually surprised that Cody and Z have not done the deed yet. They have so much chemistry, but maybe they don't want to make it weird. You guys really <laughs> together. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if something happened in the future. But that's never gonna happen, bro. Disco I would never be Cobra. caught dead inside that ass. I'm too old, Disco Cobra. Yeah, there's it's, an expiration date. The expiration date, Cody took one look at my face and was like, ugh. Well, in real life, not on camera. On camera, not like, on oh, camera. She's so beautiful yeah. on camera. And then in real life, like when she like scrunches her face and there's like 90 lines, I'm like, oh my God, what happened? <sighs> I'm scared of Botox. <laughs> this makes me scared. It's like when you open the cabinet and you see something in the back and you're like, holy shit. And you pull it up and it's like best buy dates like 10 years ago. You're like, oh yeah. my God. You blow all the dust off of it. You're like, <sighs> and it just. <sighs> I've done that shit. I found like a Coca-Cola. I went hiking one time. I got to the tip top of a mountain and I was, I was dead. And I saw this cooler and I opened it and it was like stagnant water and like two Coca-Colas like floating in the stagnant water. And I was like, bruh. And I pull it out and the best buy date. It was so past. It was like two years past. And How I'm was like, it? It was awesome. I fucking cracked it. <laughs> it was so good. I think yeah. about that all the time, right? So like it every time you watch um 
what are they called? Like uh, apocalypse movies or, or zombie movies or shows or anything like that. They always show that canned food lasts forever, right? But it doesn't. Yeah. Canned food, you know, it lasts a few years, but it does have an expiration date. It's not that far in advance. But I'm just wondering, like, how expired can you get away with with canned food? Like, if you've been in a zombie apocalypse and it's been six or seven years and you find a can of peaches, can you eat those? Because they sure do. You could. Yeah, I think um, they, they, they'll obviously have a Best Buy date, but you can still... You can still eat them. Um, there's been there's people that online that eat like a hundred year old freaking spaghettios and shit as a video. Yes, that's YouTube. true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they last a long time, but they don't last forever. That's for damn sure. They last a long time though. Canned food does. It, canned food would last long enough for radiation to disperse. All right. And I think that's the whole point. Disco, love you. I appreciate you, dude. We are closing on Naked Snake Thank fast. We're three fifty. Three fifty from Naked Snake. Three. That it? Oh my god, you guys. We're only an hour in. Thank you, Disco Cobra. I love you. Appreciate you're the bestest. So good to me. Um, Slosher says BlackRock is fine with Disney hemorrhaging money. It's a great propaganda tool. They're destroying ah. moralize us. That's dude. That, I, Does BlackRock own Disney? No, I'm, per, I'm. They're probably one of the the largest investors, I'd imagine. They're just giving them money. They're like, here, yeah, keep making your garbage. We'll keep funding you. Well, <gasps> you have to you have to do certain things to get funded. Um, and that's one of the click boxes. Like they have to have a, they have to have an on-screen gay kiss. They have to have seventy-five percent of the cast has to be um, a person of color. Seventy-five percent of the cast has to be um, part of the LGBTQ. There's a large stuff like that. There's a lot, lot of requirements like that. And um, BlackRock doesn't care about Disney hemorrhaging money. BlackRock, Vanguard, all these investment like banks and stuff, um, they. They are specifically targeting Western culture because they are being led by a foreign power to destabilize the West. That is my opinion, because what is the easiest way to take over a country without firing a bullet? Destabilize it. The Soviet Union wrote the playbook on it. They quite literally had this exact same playbook yeah. written out that is playing out right now and destabilizing the West. Actually, was, I'm pretty sure I've seen old clips of them talking about it. This was like years ago of them legitimately yeah. saying that and it's been filmed and it's out there. And everybody's just like, oh, this didn't happen. It's the easiest way to take over is to destabilize uh, the people in the country, divide them, and bring in so like overt social change. And that's why you're seeing things try to roll really fast. Um, you know, gay marriage is one thing. Um, I don't think, and most people don't have a problem with it. Um, I think a few people in Alabama probably did. Um, but once we got past it, Everybody was supporting it. And I know there's people that are not, obviously, but it's up in the 80 percentile, like 88 percentile or something that are totally fine with it. And that's a normal social change. Um, but within a couple years now, it's like we want to give nine year olds hormones and we want to give 14 year old girls double mastectomies. And if you don't th agree, you, you, you're a bigot and you're yeah. a piece of shit and you should be ostracized and killed. And that's what and, and these are being put in movies like this kind of shit's being put in movies. It's a. Um, on screen stuff like that. Um, uh, casting the ugliest woman I've ever seen for Romeo and Juliet. Quite literally, she's up there. Uh, she's This chick is as ugly as Sloth from the Goonies. Like This chick is as ugly as the ugliest person I've ever seen. And the only reason they were ugly is because of deformity. And she's not even fucking deformed. She's just that goddamn ugly. And they're like, and you know what? This is a really good actress. She, I, and watch that is the point Zia is she won't be she'll be an atrocious actress no. she's gonna be bad she and the only reason she's there is one reason alone and that is to create social media mentions yeah that is the only reason it's a thing because it's been trending for three days on fucking twitter since they yeah announced. it's true we're all talking about it god she ugly as hell she looks like she fought every ugly tree on the planet and lost it's, you know, and it's crazy that we're we're talking about all this. Meanwhile, I just watched last night for the first time a movie from 1994 called Blank Man. <laughs> and I was watching this movie like there's absolutely no way you could make this today. I was, dude, I was fucking losing it. I'm watching this Blank movie. Man. I was I was dying. Marlon, <laughs> it, dude, it was so funny. I was I was losing it. It's it's a parody. Uh, Marlon Wayans, I think, wrote it. It's a it's a superhero parody. And he's a straight up a retarded superhero. Like he's playing a retarded superhero. And I'm watching this and all the stuff that happens, like he kisses. Uh, there's a newscaster that they fall in love and she kisses him and he literally jizzes in his pants <sighs> when she kisses him. And he's like, uh, uh, 
like, you think, was, like that reminds me of uh it's like oh, you think you had you think you had a bad day i just went to get my prostate examined and as soon as he put his fingers inside me i came so hard <laughs> that i fell over and knocked over a table yes. <laughs> it's like <laughs> no um it's like uh joanna man like those movies that can't be made today joanna man um god so many good movies I haven't um, watched Cool Runnings in forever, but I have a sneaking suspicion they wouldn't be able to make that anymore. But I remember loving that movie. God, there's so many good movies. Like all those, like those black movies, um, like all the Fridays. Uh, yes. Don't, uh, don't be a menace um, in South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. Um, God, I love those fucking movies. Even the uh, the the scary movies were, I believe, Damon Wayans wrote those, right? Yeah, that makes that makes sense. He's blocker in hell, and he was also in the movie. <laughs> Healer, um, don't start that again. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Slosher. I appreciate you. MB, MB, MTB Steve says, if you want hot, cute girls in a band, Google The Warning. They actually Ooh. rock. Also, hi, Zia. Yes, Cody. I heard about The Warning like a week ago, which is weirdly coincidental. Um, yeah. Um, Sign me up, Scotty. The, my, one, it's one of my, that's my favorite. I think that's my favorite Queens rock album, The Warning. Thank you, MB, MB, MB Steve. I love Mountain you. Mountain <laughs> Dude, when I see a chick like actually shredding on guitar, and I mean actually shredding, like not like shittily. Hell yeah. God, I'm like, fuck, this is awesome. Is that where you want to empty your balls in her? You want to give her the beans? Yeah, but the issue is, is she probably crazy? <laughs> it's it's so hard to find a woman. Ooh. It is so hard to find a woman. I like that is fun, is cool and cool and witty and fun, you know, clever, but also it doesn't have the crazy bug. No, you're gonna have to deal with a little crazy. Yeah, the crazy bug sucks. I hate the crazy bug, man. Thank you, MB. Matt Amos on the old food thing. Steve 989 MRE info has eaten something to say. Oh, dude, I used to watch his videos all the time. Uh, you know what? I've all actually, that's true. I've seen some of those where he's literally eating like 100 year old MREs and shit or 50 year old, whatever. Very old. Now, I remember are really cute. my uncle was in the Marines for like 27 years and he had a bunch of MREs and he made me eat this chili mac one and it was fucking it great. Good? It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, My, I was like 14 and we were out hunting turkey. He took me turkey hunting and I've never hunted. My dad's not a hunt. My dad is not a Southern man. A lot of misconception. My dad is not a Southern man. Um, my other parts of my family are, um, but they're not from the South. They're all from the North, but they moved here in like the 80s, 90s, 2000s. And eventually. Where's your dad from? Illinois, Rockford. Oh, okay. So is, my whole family is, but they all slowly moved to Alabama. Now they all live in Alabama. And, um, uh, that's on my dad's side. My grandma was from California, but she, I think her originally, her family's from like Atala, Alabama. And um, so that we all converged here. And they, my, they like, they leaned so hard in the Southern shit. So my uncle would always try to take me hunting. And I finally went turkey hunting. It was like four degrees outside, 5 a.m. We're sitting there with damn 410 shotguns. And he's like, feed me MRE. And it was like the most boring thing I've ever done in my life. But it was fun. We went squirrel hunting once and I shot a squirrel and its head exploded. Um, and then he tried to make me eat it and I threw up. But um, no, my dad was not like that, not like that at all. But uh, I I enjoy MREs. I guess it depends on the one, right? Thank you, Matt Amos. I remember um my my bumpa Terry um is like my grandpa, but I couldn't say he's was married to my grandma, but I couldn't say grandpa when I was little, so I called him Bumpa, and I call him that to this day. So that's but anyway, my bumpa Terry was in the military, and he used to um. I also have a bunch of MREs, but the only thing that I would ever eat is it was like that freeze dried fruit. And they would like pack it into this one. It was like a brick of different freeze dried fruit. Yeah, yeah. And I do. That was like my favorite thing. It was such a treat. Whenever there were those, I would dig through the MREs and th like throw, throw the other ones to the side and just grab those freeze dried fruits. I thought it was amazing. It was so exciting. I can, that reminds me, ass girl made cookie dough. Oh, like, yes. Mo like months ago. Mm. And it's in this like, I don't know why she does this. It's in a bowl. That's like this big mixing bowl, like as big as my freaking head. It's big as my kitchen island. I have a marble, a, like a, a a green marble kitchen island in like the middle of my kitchen. Hmm. And she makes this, and then she makes like four cookies, and then rolls the rest up in shrink wrap and like nine different like longer roll of tubes. So like every now and then I'll just go and open the freezer and grab, like no shit, they're like this big and <laughs> like this long. And I'll just peel off the shrink wrap and I'll just eat it like a fucking like a hot dog for a minute and then I'll put it back. <laughs> Hell yes, <laughs> that I would be so fat. <laughs> yeah, dude, she's she killing me. Slosher says BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street own over eighty percent of the stock market between them. 
They have proxy votes from everyone's mutual funds Ooh. and pensions. And and on every in every single row at Congress, on the House and everything, there's a lobbyist that are from these groups that are influencing vote. I don't know how lobbyists exist. Like I the understand fact that how they did back in the day. I don't understand how they exist now. The fact that they're legal is on, they're legal because the people who create and pass the laws don't want them to be illegal because they want to keep getting the money. So it's like we're stuck in this loop, this catch twenty two, where it's never it should be illegal. There should you, can't, you there's no world where that should exist. The fact that it does is batshit crazy, and we just all accept it because it's never going to change. Yeah, yeah, I'm completely right there with you. Um, oh, I thought I was muted for a second. Slosher, there's another thing I want to talk about that's fucked up. Thank you, Slosher. I love you. Appreciate you. Um, Maple and Bick this again sure. with an orange boy. He says, talking about conspiracy theories, I believe that the uh, assisted suicide doctrine being introduced here in the West is a psyop for population control. Just think about it. Um, now, the only reason I I love yeah. this conspiracy, but I, I disagree slightly with it, and the reason I do is because there are so many fucking people that the minuscule amount of people that are killing themselves or you know signing up for assisted suicide like the one percent of people maybe less doesn't really do anything for population control unless they're going to do like 25 percent of the population it's not really going to change anything yeah it's i gonna think be the, like twenty thousand people maybe maximum a year which isn't right. going to change it that's not even going to offset our growth rate i don't think and i also think that uh, i don't know if it's uh, assisted suicide is is it's going to be for people who just don't want to live anymore or and this is where i might tend to agree with it only for this specific reason. People who are terminal and don't want to go through a horrible, painful, sure. long, drawn out death. That's sure. where I, I, that's something I could be like, you know what? I actually understand that. If you want to die with dignity and you want to die on your own terms, you're going to die anyway and you don't want to be in pain through all of it. Fine. Um, but I don't know if this is meant for people who just are depressed. Do you know what I mean? Like, 100%. is that it's uh, dude, I, it's the exact same conversation and argument as. If you are going to transition, it should be the absolute last thing. You yeah, do. yeah. But it's not. It's the first now. And right. It should be the last. Agreed. Assistant suicide is is following the exact same trend in Canada. You uh -oh. can get one consultation, and they'll agree to fucking Ooh. kill you. No, no. One, like a five minute consultation, they're like, "I will right, we'll kill you." Yes. Mm. I'm like, no, no. That's not. That doesn't make any sense. So that's how I. That's how I feel about it. Um. I don't think it's necessarily wrong in every single application, but I do think, uh, I think you should be a man about it. I think if you're going to do it, they should be like, ah, right, we're going to talk to you for a year of hard counseling, yes. counseling, see if you can make it through it. If you can't make it through that and you're, you're still all about fucking, you, you should have to eat a bullet like in front of everybody. Hmm. Like it can't be, it has to be brutal. It can't be like you get in a tube and smile and everybody tells you bye. Like you got to be, boo. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be some bullshit thank you so much uh, uh maple invictus don't forget disco cobra with a pink boy another one could you look at pictures of sandra nasik of guano apes possibly her and instagram since she has many updates of herself maria brink is on this oh are you trying to make me look up hot bitches right now Hold on, oh, i love maria brink disco cobra i love maria brink so much I don't know. She's so sexy and she's such a good singer. Come on. Sandra Nasik uh, has I bird know. face. And I don't know Sandra been, I've never been about bird face. I don't really care for bird face disco cobra. Um, it's a style some people like, a facial structure, but she's got a, she got, kind of has, she kind of has bird face. Okay. I see what you're saying. The nose and she's, Easy. it's very sharp features. She's it's pretty a, sexy right here though. It's a specific look that I think is very exotic. <laughs> and so I can see why people like so big it. In this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, don't get me wrong. When we're when we're uh, criticizing somebody's looks or rating them, uh, I would I would almost 99% of the time still have sex with them. That's not in the equation. But I think she I think she's not my favorite. I do like her stomach right here. It's nice. Mm, Flat stomachs. Body. You know what I like? Mm. I like when girls um gain a little weight, but they still have fucking flat stomachs, but they have like love handles and like little ass flips. Oh bro, I like my balls <laughs> hurt right now just thinking about it. Gotta love that. I think you're there was it was that one night I was drunk and you were sitting up and you had those hip dips where the lines come across. Yeah, I do have those. And I like text you and I'm like, oh my god, Zion, yeah, I remember that. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. So, I like sent you a, a literally a shitty picture of me taking a picture of my screen, and I was like, oh my god, Zion. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I do remember that. And you were like sitting all unattractive and the gobbler was out. I, and yeah, like, I was going to say, I look like a fucking gremlin. And drunk Cody's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I didn't fucking just suck a fart out of your ass right now. <laughs> That's what I do, man. Oh, my God. Thank you, Disco. Uh, oh, Maria Brinkin in this moment. Let me look at that one, too. Oh, I love Maria really? Brink. I love in this moment. That's one of my my um. You know what? I'm putting them on the list of my favorite bands. She's Blood, kind of cutesy. She is sexy. Come on. I like her. her for her, it's a whole attitude. I like her. Uh, her her. She has a very mousy face. I like that. Very mousy. I kind of like it. She's just like yeah. I think I love her. I think she's yeah. <sighs> fantastic i just w wish women didn't age so sad <laughs> like when men age we get a little bit of gray in our beard and our hair goes back a little bit and we get a little bit of gray and we just get more jacked like <laughs> women you know you fall apart like fucking like if you th throw a damn like a, a saltine cracker in water <laughs> no it's funny i always used to think that guys age better than girls but i'm starting to change my tune on that the more mm. i'm seeing side by side i'm sorry the more i'm seeing it side by side the more i'm like I'm not sure oh, that's you know what? Okay, here we're gonna test that theory right now. Um, of course, you can uh, find, but you could also flip it and find it the other way. Oh no, um, <laughs> old nerdy! <laughs> watch, you about to see, you about to see right now. You about to see right. I'm about to prove it to you. Sasha, Look at this. The best human resources. Look at this. Hold on. This healer is, guys this do Botox too. Healer, my dad gets Botox. I know so many guys who get Botox. <laughs> if this doesn't. If this doesn't prove, prove it you to you. You can't prove it because you could go the other way. I'll show no, you, you another one. You could, but this is the of more typical. This is the more typical. Look at this right now. Tell it me. Used, it used to, okay. It used to be, but you can, I don't know. Like I said, I used to believe it too. I used to be like, oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm telling you, it's changing. And this is just one example. Flip it the other way. It's hard to flip it the other way is what I'm it's saying. It's not that hard to flip it the other way. Show me Brendan Fraser and fucking like any oh. girl who's aged well. <laughs> like you could do it with plenty. You no, know, how dare you? Yeah, you how could. How dare you say Come that? Come on. And look, I love Brendan Fraser, but the poor man aged like sour milk. I, I love him to pieces, but it wasn't good. Yeah, show me Val Kilmer. Thank you, Jenna. It's That's true. way different. Val Kilmer has I a condition. He's got like a he's got had like multiple surgeries and all kinds of cancers and shit. That poor yeah, bastard. I think that it's oh wow. That's like opening a casket, be like, see, he didn't enrage very well. Yeah, he's bones. <laughs> he's fucking bones. But the uh, point obviously. is, yeah, Jennifer Connolly, also from exactly Jennifer Connolly, it's like <sighs> it's just it's wild. Yeah, okay. I agree. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Salma Hayek, like we can uh, yeah. there are you can <laughs> flip it. Well, when you're giving the best examples possible. But of course, you're all, but you would do the same. And I, I would definitely fill both of those women up to the brim with my <laughs> yeah, baby that's gravy. That's kind and of I what I'm saying. And you wouldn't have to worry about anything because they're not getting pregnant. Yeah. That's it's Kate, Kate Blanchett. She's another one. God, I yeah. love Kate Blanchett. Um, she's fantastic. I just I think that it used to be that way, but I do think that I will say men and women are both getting procedures procedures but also i think that the procedures have gotten better so that aging is like people have figured out skin treatments they figured out botox they figured out plastic surgery that's done very well and i think that that plays a big role into it but also people have realized you can't bake yourself in the fucking sun because you know what the sun does to white people it makes them fucking old why do you think i don't go in the sun people give me shit because i don't go out in the sun they're like you're so pale i'm like i'd rather be pale than wrinkly and fucking old bag yeah i'll be at a racetrack and it'll be hot as fuck and Ass girl will be like, hey, you want me to put, uh, oh, and there's a different girl. I'm fucking, this other girl wanted to put uh, sunscreen on my face. And I was like, nah. And then I just burned a motherfucking Chris. Yeah, yeah. That shit is dead. Shit, that, that's what ages you. Oh, God. Trent Westbrook says, bro. What's up, dude? Trent Westbrook. What up, bro? How you doing, my friend? Hope you're doing well. I love you, Trent. I appreciate you, my friend. We are 250 from five, or next, snake and snake. I appreciate you guys so much. 250. We are 25% away already. 250 Trent. Maze balls. My boy Trent says so good, man. Love you, dude. Uh, Disco says, anyone wondering why I separated the name for some odd reason? YouTube hates certain names or words. Can't see the chat. It's like AI programs. I was trying to get an AI mm -hmm. image for this stream, and I was like, The Rock in tears. Um, and it was like, Can't do that. It's against the TOS. And I'm like, What the fuck? So I was like, The Rock. Sad. Can't do that. And I'm like, Can I not type in The Rock? So I was like, Dwayne Johnson. Can't oh, wow. do it. So I was like, Huh. Wrestler in tears. And it literally AI imaged a picture of the rock. 
He's just the wrestler, apparently. Why? Why? It even has his tattoos. It's hilarious. Thank you, Disco Cobra. Oh, Sasha's right, too. Drugs and alcohol for decades, 100%. That'll fuck you up. It'll fuck yep. you up in one year. Oh, you yeah. Take hard drugs for one year, and you will look like a nightmare in one yeah. year. Yeah. Slosher says the slippery slope is real. Canada's talking about expanding made to be autistic. What? Oh, yeah. So if you're, yeah, just if you're autistic, you can be approved for assisted suicide. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. See, it is. It's it's true. It's a slippery slope and it sucks because there are certain things that make sense and they always, 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 they got to take it too far. I bring this up as an example all the time, but this is an example that I, this is a hill I will die on. The body positivity movement. It started in a good place. Is every girl going to be stick thin and look like a Victoria's Secret model? No, and they shouldn't because that shit is unhealthy as fuck. It started in the right place of like a normal looking girl. And by normal, I just mean she looks like a regular person who's not dying of malnutrition. Fantastic. And then we we decided to take it so far that we're like, ah, yes, obesity is beautiful. And you're like, wait, what? No. Why did we go there from that? And just they, lying they, to ourselves now. I don't under I don't understand why. Why we take a good thing and we we fucking ruin it every goddamn time. Every time. We just lie to ourselves. That's all we do. I, it's so silly. Thank you, Slosher, by the way. Appreciate you. Says uh uh Steve Chino says you ain't ain't nobody hotter than Jenna Ortega. Yeah. This guy loves Jenna Ortega. I think she's very pretty. She is gorgeous. But she's not the hottest in the world. To me, this is my oh, well, personal yeah, opinion. Sure. I, but I, this guy I, loves her. I'm all I like about it. I love I think the the peak attractiveness is like white women, white blonde women. Um I, everybody, and everybody has great. has their thing though. You I know, feel like, like that's I feel like that's agreed upon. I feel like that's it? generally a consensus so? is the most attract well, just AI image, uh, most attractive women, uh, most attractive women, plural in the world. And it will just, it'll AI generate like five women that are like blonde and white <laughs> and with blue eyes every time. Maybe. So, yeah. Um, and that doesn't mean other people aren't a, a fucking super attractive. Jenna Ortega is super attractive, but she's Hispanic. So when she hits 31, she going to go from Jenna to a Consuelo. <laughs> what? Did you see it? Should we that? bring up Salma Hayek again? <laughs> What's that one bitch? Fucking not, not uh, Selena Gomez. Oh my God. Well, she gained a lot of weight. She looks like straight up like she's trying to clean my house. Uh, she, make, she gained a lot of corner, weight. I'm pulling it up. Dude, I could not believe um, Selena Gomez uh, went into hiding for like five seconds and came out, and now she's a gargantuan. What it, happened? It, yes. She, oh, Jenna says she has lupus. Okay, that sucks. That's, what does lupus, lupus make you fat? Uh, lupus gives you all kinds of problems. You can't work out the same way. It's it's a bummer. I know my friend Skinny had lupus, um, and he was I called he was we called him Skinny because he was like ninety pounds and he had lupus, and uh, he never got past that ninety pounds. <laughs> he was always that way wow, until he died. Really? Um. So. Oh, yeah. the drugs. Okay, the drugs. Yeah, he's a real small guy. But no, that's rest. It's sad that she has lupus. Yeah, oh. that sucks. And there's and when you're on that's a tough one. When you're on medication that makes you gain weight, there's not a ton you can do about it, especially if you need the medication to live. So a fan donated her kidney. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Imagine a fan doing that for you. No one in my chat would donate my ass a kidney. I, mm -hmm. I don't think anyone would give me their kidney either. They'd be like, die. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um uh, Dana Books says, Cody, you should try date men so you can see what pieces of crap they can be. Z <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, look, dude, Honestly, I get everyone it. Everyone can be pieces of crap. I get it. I just think it's disingenuous. I think it's disingenuous for the whole, oh, everybody is bad and everybody can do it. How is that not it. disingenuous? Of course There's it a, is. No, I mean, everybody can do whatever. I'm just saying that there's statistics for a reason. Statistics are so misleading. People point to, point to statistics a lot. Um, unfortunately, we know so little about the reasoning behind it, and people lie. It's just statistics, you can point to a certain thing, but the same thing with like crime statistics. That shit is shady as fuck because they're like, oh, look, we don't have any more crime. The statistics, crime statistics, statistics God, I can't say this goddamn word, have gone way down. Uh, but surprise, it's just because they decriminalized everything. Sure. The thing is but, still happening. So you got to sure. kind of take it with a grain of salt. Look, look, this is how I see it. <laughs> Statistics say I should not walk through the hood in Chicago. So I'm not going to do it, Zia. 
Well, no, absolutely. Yeah. Like I, I exactly. get that. So 87 or 83% of women, um, they begin divorce proceedings. That but, means, but, but does that make them bad people? Like no. and just because they're like, you know what I mean? It doesn't. What I'm saying, I'm saying women often decide they're not happy way more than men do. And it's, this is only a thing in the Western culture. This is not a thing anywhere else. It's because women, it's it's because of social media and marketing towards women is there's always something better and the grass is always greener. That's the popular phrase. Maybe, but it's also they've done, and this is again, and you could argue that this statistic and study isn't right either, but uh, women are happier being alone than men are. Because oh, it's that's not as much that work. bullshit. See? See, no, I saw it. No, now no, you're no. Not calling I, saw, on that one. I saw that fucking re that study last year when it came out. It is uh -huh. the most bullshit thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh, yeah. How it is some? so How bullshit. I searched all I went through. I read that whole motherfucker when it came out last year. Uh, Yeah, actually, women are really happy when they're 47 and like alone with their cats. I'm like, oh, fuck off. This was written by a 47 year old woman with no fucking people and just cats. Uh, I don't More know. happy. Uh, depends on what you mean by happy. More fulfilled? I guarantee you not. I think it's just up to the person. I don't know, but that's kind. But that's kind of my point with statistics: is you cannot trust them because it's most of the time very flawed. Are you fulfilled right now? Am I fulfilled? Yes. I mean, I don't know. I feel you, you text like me all the time. You're like, bro, I'm dying. I want to. I want to die. I, I, what I want is to be rich so I can garden and travel. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> that's what travel. I want. What are you talking about? You can't get on a plane. Yeah, no, it's going to be a tough one. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but for now, but I can, I can drive. If I had a lot of money, I could drive across the country and that would be cool. No, driving super sucks. <laughs> oh, I way prefer to drive. Oh God. No, but yeah, there's, there's always a bias. Slosher says, I heard you can <laughs> treat lupus with 12 donuts a day. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Thank you. Slosher. I appreciate you. Disco Cobra. So it's just because I'm lame and Jeremy from GG G and G got me back into wrestling. It was pretty decent tonight. WrestleMania is going on now. And The Rock and Rhea Ripley did a good job tonight. Rhea Ripley's a smoke show as well. Um, dude, speaking of The Rock, I can't watch wrestling. I don't know. Something weird. I just can't. It's not nothing to do with wrestling. But I watched uh Iron Fist or the Iron Claw the other I was night. I say Iron Fist. That's fucking an old great. Show. It was awesome. Um, it's fucked up. That's a true story, too. Um, but, yeah, um, The Rock, Disco Cobra, was the main topic for tonight. So The Rock, guys, came out and said it was a mistake. I think he said it was a mistake. It doesn't really matter. But he basically said it was a mistake to endorse Joe Biden in 2020, and he is not doing it again. And everybody on Twitter wants him dead. Oh, come, seriously? They're, do do they really think that Joe Biden has been doing a good job? This is what the left does. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you do not follow every single variable and belief structure to the T, they will eat you. That is yeah. the whole point. They will eat you. Well, here's they, the problem. That's going to it's and it's it's been happening for a while now is that they're just eating themselves because no one can ever live up to those impossible standards because humans are humans and they're flawed and they have varying belief systems. And if it's not completely in line, um, it, it's like you said, you're completely fucked, but it's happening now to themselves. Like no one's in that elite category where they're so perfect that they've never said or done anything. That's not going to get them canceled at some point. It's getting yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. So let's pull up this clip and I'm proud of the rock for saying this and coming out because saying this is detrimental to his career. Um, he's already a good billionaire, but who gives a fuck? Um, but the thing is, I like it. Thing is, um, um, people on the right still don't trust him because he's a flaming liberal, and that's fine. Um, but now people on the left don't trust him because he's not sucking him off like he's supposed right. to. You made that endorsement in 2020. Are you happy with the state of America? Am I happy with the state of America right now? Well, that answer is no. Do I believe we're going to get better? I, I believe in that. I'm an optimistic guy, and I, I believe we can get better. Um, the endorsement that I made uh, years ago with Biden was one I thought was the best decision for me at that time. And I thought back then, when we talk about, hey, uh, you know, I, I'm in this position uh, where I have some influence, and it's my job then. I felt like that then. It's my job now to exercise my influence and share with this. This is who I'm going to endorse. 
am I going to do that again this year? That answer is no. Good. Uh, yeah, that's great. I don't see this is seriously a problem for people. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. You could say simply, the Rock right now, they could be like, hey, Rock. <laughs> hey, Mr. Rock. Um, do you think trans women should uh, compete in contact football with real women? He And it, he could be like, um, no, I don't think they should. And he would be canceled immediately. They'd be on the left. Be like, How dare you, bigot ass, bigot motherfucker? The issue is, is a lot of people don't. They didn't read into that interview enough. He was talking about. He not. He's not saying he's not left. He's not saying all these things. He's saying that he regrets saying anything in the first place because it was divisive. That's that's what he was really meaning. Okay. Yeah. Um, which I completely agree with that. Um, but the fact of the matter is, uh, no. Um, I can't, I can't believe like celebrities are required to endorse candidates and especially not like, like geriatric elderly fucking people like Biden mm -hmm. shit. Trump's old as fuck too, but at least he can like talk. I was say, at least he's with it. Yeah. Like he's obviously he has all his mental faculties. He's there. Yeah. He can still call people ugly. <laughs> right, like he can still do with the thing he does. However, um, you feel about him, he's entertaining as hell. I do wish that there was a candidate that, that was like sixty or fifty-eight. That'd Holy nice. shit! I'm so tired of people. I'm tired of candidates that were the lat when they bought a coke when they were a teenager. It was five cents, <laughs> and That's they're amazing. like, "Ah, oh, how kids, can you ever?" Kids these days just don't want to work. That's why they can't buy houses. <laughs> and then everyone's like, "Uh, huh." It's only getting worse. I it's know. only getting worse. Speaking of worse, we are we are two hundred even from neck and snake. Um, speaking of getting get, of getting worse, my mortgage went up eight hundred dollars. Eight a month. And, yeah. Oh sweet Jesus! I'd die. I wouldn't be able. To, I'd have to sell my house. My I, uh, I, yeah, my um, I got a I got a piece of mail from I think it was from a mortgage company maybe, and they're like, hey, uh, your house has been re, um evaluated or again what is it called uh appraised reappraised yeah. yeah well it, again it was it was like two months ago and they reappraised my house uh, some yeah. random person i guess and my house went up one hundred fifty thousand dollars in value in like the year i've had or two years i've had it now i mean that's great but also jesus christ it was great when i was reading that part of it um so i was like oh my god my house is, it, it'll be a million dollars in like three years probably two years and i'm like hell yeah um and uh, then I will go down and it's like, so your property taxes is this now? And I'm like, wait. And then it was like, now here's your new mortgage payment. <laughs> I was like, ah! it went up $800. I, I would cry. That's so horrible. Because you have to I was pay gonna... for two years um, because they already fronted the previous year. So you have to pay like uh... you have to pay back to back pay for the year and then the additional pay. So it's like 400 twice. Uh... Ugh, it's brutal. Uh... My property taxes used to be $600. Now they're almost 10 grand. <laughs> It's fucking crazy how that's much how out of this control. That's almost a thousand dollars a month. That's out of control. It is, yeah, it is. It's unbelievable. Um, but at any rate, it's uh, it's life. And if all it fails, the the positive equity I have in it from selling my old house is astronomical. So it's all good. That's good. I mean, um, Tristan says, but didn't you already sign for your loan? Yeah, that's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the the property oh, taxes um, are part of. So what happens, Tristan, is when you buy a house, you have money that goes into what's called an escrow account. And from there, they pay your property taxes. Yep. So if your property taxes go up, that amount goes up that they then take from your mortgage payment and put into the escrow yep. account. And then the rest of it goes towards your interest. And a very small amount of it goes towards your principal uh, for the first 20 years. It's it's ridiculous. Looking at the the amortization schedule makes me want to do very terrible things that would get me in trouble if I said them. Yeah, it's brutal. It's absolutely Same. brutal. Um, it's so it's so awful. It's so awful. Um, so yeah, and I do fully expect it to go fucking up way higher too. Um, because the city I live in is becoming for real Ziza city. Um, when I first moved here, it was kind of like just another place in Alabama. I've been here for over 10 years now, 11 to 12 almost. And since I've lived here, it has turned, it has went from kind of a rural Alabama place to, you know, a few strip malls to almost like a big city. That's um, wild. And uh, I think when I moved here, it was like a couple hundred thousand 
and now it's closing in on like half a million people. Um, there's apartment complexes every on every road that used to be just trees. It's just fucking apartment complexes. Um, my property taxes were six hundred and eighty dollars in two thousand twelve, and now they're almost ten grand. Um, and my house wasn't. I mean, my house was like over a little over a hundred grand in two thousand twelve. Wow. And um, that so if you like actually did the math, my property taxes should only have gone up to three grand based on value and it's not it's up so high it's crazy so i've got my eye on a, a place that i kind of want to move that um it is like that where it started off you know a lot smaller and it's just exploding wildly yeah it's outrageous it's getting worse and worse but luckily there's always positive a positive equity there's it's a freaking rumble rants the the rumble chat was not automatically freaking scrolling Mudbug with a $50 yeah. rubble rat says, damn, Z, I didn't mean right now, but thank you, sweetie. Thank you, Mudbug. I love you. Anything for you, Mudbug. I didn't see that. It's not auto-scrolling. I was like, oh, what? Oh, no. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Mudbug, for all your love, my friend. Bill Dozer says assisted suicide is like third league because of death row, death in Canada. It's third leading cause of death in Canada. Yes. Is um, it literally really? literally letting a sad autistic woman with anxiety opt for this. Yep. Oh, my God. Yep. That's just how this is now. We anxiety is killing people dude we are getting into a really weird dystopian future it's 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 getting kind of scary it's happening to a point where the more i hear things the more like no this can't be real this is a parody but then it's real yeah it's why i'm glad i live in alabama it's like the it's like new york's um squatters rights are so out of control yeah i'm hearing those stories too where someone goes on vacation and comes back and someone's squatting in their house and they legally cannot get them out there was a guy that threw somebody out of their house recently and changed the locks, and the guy that owns the house got arrested. That's insanity. It was made at a time. Squatters like laws were kind of in place at a time where, you know, a it was to prevent landlords from being like fucking vicious. Like they would charge you and then kick you out within a month if you like farted loudly. And now um it's they wrote them so staunchly that migrants and random people are coming over and being like hey what's up bitch i can just move into any house i see and they can't kick me out and that's what they're doing they're, they're it's happening in mass there's oh, yeah. there's mansions right now fucking mansions and people are just breaking the window and going and like staying in a mansion and now they have ownership rights to the fucking mansions that's it's crazy I, I don't understand how we're letting that happen i'd be furious um my you, you know what i mean <laughs> uh, uh war age men are coming um, Dana Bo says, um, or Dana Bo, Dan, Dan, you box. I will never own a house. I live in SoCal. Oh, I will Danny never. Bucks, that's why I left SoCal. <laughs> I will never well, understand why, why people voluntarily live in SoCal. Or Look, California I'm going to be honest with you. I liked it when I first moved there, but it was, it was a good transition for me. Cause I had spent my entire life in Hawaii, which is, it's, it's such a different place. It's hard to explain it. So just moving straight from Hawaii to like uh, somewhere on the East coast would, for me would be very jarring, not just, um, culturally, but also with the weather and all that stuff. So for me, California and LA was a really good middle. There were a lot of brown people still. They were Mexican, different kind of brown, but they were still around, um, lots of them. And it was, the weather wasn't so drastic that, but I was still cold when I first moved there. And I'm going to be honest with you. I liked LA for the first, maybe four, four ish years that I was there. The last three things got like it was expensive, but coming from Hawaii to me, it was not as expensive as Hawaii. So I, to me, it was cheap. I was like, shit, this is way cheaper than where I'm from. So great. Um, there was a lot of stuff to do. The weather was really nice. There weren't, the homelessness wasn't as bad as it got. So I liked it, right. but um, yeah. Jack and the big Island. The issue is, yeah. Yeah, is I will say, I don't understand how people, and this is not a slot at you, Dana Bucks, but I don't know how people share those memes and shit on like home ownership and like, oh, never own a house when they voluntarily live in places that have the highest cost of living when it comes to home ownership in the all, almost on the entire planet. If you want to buy a house, if that's an actual concern of yours, you have to move out of places like fucking in Washington, places you move out of Seattle, you have to move out of like certain places like Miami, you're gonna have to move from LA, you're gonna have to move from these places i had to, i had to leave otherwise yeah. there was no chance dude there is there is it's now this is it's changed has there's been a lot of change recently when i was 28 years old 
my house was worth 138 grand and my mortgage was like $800. That is oh, nothing. That's amazing. This and that, now this Christ. isn't this isn't a big the city I'm in right now. Obviously that's changed a lot cuz I sold the house for like 300 a few years ago. Oh um God. but there are places in rural Alabama that still have similar prices to that. If you live in like SoCal, for example, and you're like, man, like homeownership, so we'll never own houses again. I don't really, I, can, I don't take that seriously when you can, you can move to Tony, Alabama and buy a house for 90 grand. But here's the thing. House, here's know? the thing. I, and this is where I, I got to have some in between here. I don't want to live in the middle of fucking nowhere. I need to be near stuff. And I like, I can't, I know like, yeah, sure. I could go live in bumblefuck nowhere where there's, you sure. know, two street lights. but then what the fuck do you do? I that's agree not, that's that. not for me. I, I completely can't. agree. I, I would can't. never move to Arab Alabama. It's a shithole. Um, the, where I live is actually, and everybody will tell you that live has lived in Huntsville, Alabama. Everybody will tell you, um, it is an awesome fucking place. It's, it's like living in a, it's like living in a big city without the crime. Now, that being said, I don't live in Huntsville. I live right outside of Huntsville. But um, that being said, the airport is less than 10 minutes from my house. I can fly anywhere like that. Well, and also if you're living in a place where there actually is stuff, like, you know what I mean? I'm talking where there's not a lot, but your house is also worth a lot now. So any, I've, I've actually kind of been looking into this and I've been looking around to different places. Like if I was going to move to somewhere in the U.S., where would I move to? Uh, what would that look like? And, and this is coming like, and I've looked at places in the South, like, okay, where is there some stuff going on where I don't have to completely give up and, you know, live where there's actually some, some civilization. Cause that's just how I am. I know yeah. some people love to live where there's nothing and, and that's great for them. It's just not what I am into, but anyway, anywhere where people want to live, where there's stuff going on, it is really expensive. Like yeah. I was looking at different places in, in Alabama and North and South Carolina and all of the prices are comparable to New Jersey. It's not like that much cheaper. And yeah, if it's you, not well, that much cheaper in most places. If you move into any of the main places, yeah, you're fucked. Um, that's why I said Tony, Alabama, because Tony, Alabama is 25 minutes away from where I live. So you just you could drive here every day if you wanted to. Um, but that being said, yeah, it gets pretty damn expensive um, here. But it there's there's so much cheap shit all around. Like if you just drive a little bit, you just drive a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's neither here nor there. Mintrex says, someone tell them about all the empty houses in Martha's Vineyard. Thank you. Yeah, ahead. for real, Mintrex. Get them up there. Just bust them up there. Just give them, give yeah. them some. Thank you, uh, Mintrex. Love you. If you're a 10 New Zealand boy, um, we are uh, 190 away from Naked Snake. And also, make sure you like the stream if you have not. Like the stream. I need you to spam that like button. Thank Can't you, be. Mintrex. K2000 says, they also sell your organs first. Or they sell your organs after it. Dude, that's just like that's a financial incentive. Yeah, that's stupid. That's stupid as hell for me. That seems like they're just doing it. It's almost like, you know, you remember hospital grants with COVID deaths? Everybody was listed as a COVID death because of hospital grants. Come on. Come on, K2000. You know what I'm saying? Pretty weird for me. Pretty strange. Um, but anyways, yeah. Um, home ownership's been I, I've I've kind of agreed in the past little while. Home ownership is pretty wild right now. Um, I got real lucky. <laughs> that I bought my house when I did. I bought my first house um, and then sold it, bought my second house when I was 23, 22, 23, and sold it two years ago, and then I bought my third house. And um, once you understand the process of buying a house, it's actually not as daunting as you may think. Um, it's just the process is kind of wild. There's a lot of shit you have to go through. Um, the first and house is a huge learning experience. This is, is my yeah. first house, and 100%, there's a lot of stuff I would have done different. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, you learn a lot. <laughs> you yeah. learn a lot of weird shit, but yeah, I don't, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend going to a big city and renting. It's always so weird to me that I couldn't ever, now look, I'm a different kind of person, um, and I'm not shitting on anybody, but I could never live in an apartment or something. I don't know how people do it. I will never understand how people do it. Um, it's not the best. I mean, that's where I, well, it's weird. Cause growing up in Hawaii, I never lived in an apartment. Um, cause we don't really have a lot on the Island I'm from, but then moving to LA, you have to live in an apartment. And I lived in a tiny ass 500 square foot apartment. That was like two grand a month. Um, and then moving to New Jersey, I lived in an apartment for a while, then a house. So I've lived in both. And there are pros and cons. I don't mind living in an apartment. 
if it's a nice one, I hope it, I don't really ever have to do that again, unless it's a decent size. I, um, I don't know what happened. Some like in my life somewhere. Um, but I will, ab- I can absolutely not tolerate anybody telling me what to do. Mm, Unless we're like, f- we're like friends and we've known each other a long time when there's a certain amount of respect there, a random person telling me something, telling me what to do. Somebody comes to my door. Hey, turn your music down. Somebody bugs me at all. I will fly off the fucking handle and go to jail. I see. And it's kind of, it came out of nowhere. It's just something that happened to me. I don't know when it happened, but I've noticed it. Like I was at the gym the other day and this guy was like trying to threaten me. <laughs> he texted me about this. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. I was just working out and um i like uh i like did some decline press and uh got up and walked away and i didn't like wop down with the like the spray no one does it um unless you're like overtly sweaty or gross or have something going on you you know it's not a big deal and i've never done it uh, in like 11 years unless i was like sweaty or like I had a sunburn and i was pilly or uh, maybe i just left something behind i'll well, yeah. you know, obviously i'll clean about it to myself um, but I don't do it arbitrarily randomly. And, um, I, uh, was just walking over and this dude like approached me. He's a little bit shorter than me. He's jacked as fuck, by the way. <laughs> and he was just fucking shaking furious. He's like, you're not going to clean up your fucking shit. Motherfucker. And I was just like, w- like blown away. I was like, what? And he was like, just screaming. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then he walked away and I was like, that was weird. So I like went to get my keys and I was like putting my pull my hoodie on and he came over and started yelling at me again and I fucking Ooh. I my my twig nuked it went nuke and I was like telling him I was <laughs> I was yell I was I was stoically uh raising my voice to this guy I was like you need to fucking walk away motherfucker and focus on yourself don't worry about what I'm doing walk the fuck away right now and he was like he, he, you could tell he's never been talked back to before he looked like he was like twenty five. And he oh, like, and he just like stopped and was looking at me, and then started walking away. And then he'd stop again and look at me. I'm like, what? Why you keep stopping? I'm fucking right here. I was like, either either come over here or fucking go lift shit. I was like, <laughs> I was like, do the fuck, figure it out, motherfucker. And he was just like, he smirked and walked away. And I was like, yeah, he'll never talk to me again. He'll never like approach me again. And I was like, I, it, it, it there's it's just a weird thing. I don't know if it was retail. I don't know if it's like retail that fucked me up. But if somebody tries to tell me to do something, like my twig fucking snaps. And I'll be like, I will fucking, I will kill both of us. <laughs> like, what do you, don't do this right now. <laughs> I'm actually very, very similar, oddly. And again, I don't know what happened in my life either, but I don't like being told what to do. And if you tell me to do something, then immediately I'm not going to do it. Yeah, like, I, if it's, even if it's something I was going to do, like, yeah, I was absolutely going to do that thing. If you tell me to do it, I'm not doing it anymore. I was yeah. going to, now I'm I- not. I um I, he probably kicked my ass too. I'm I don't I doubt I can fight, <laughs> but because like my dad was like I mean like you could you you can fight like if you fought him like I'm like no he probably beat my ass. Uh, I don't know I don't fight. Um, you but never I'll, know I, until you're in it. I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm just not. I'm sorry. Like I'm too old to care. Um, but yeah. Um, I he was like saying he was like saying as he walked away he's gonna get me banned from the gym. And I was like, I, I was like, Ella, I, I literally was like, I'd love to fucking see that, dude. I'd love to see that shit. So I walked out of the gym and I got my truck and I called my buddy. Uh, I ain't going to say his name, but I called him because he owns the gym. <laughs> and I was like, hey, this guy just fucking said he's going to fight me. Just letting you know. And he said he's going to get me kicked out of the gym. And this dude, my the guy that owns the gym was like laughing on the phone. <laughs> he was like, ah. he's like this motherfucker. And he's like, I'm going to so pull up the cameras. Stupid. He like he has the camera feed at his house. He pulls up the camera and he's like watching it as he's talking to me. He's like, dude, this guy's a fucking psycho. He's on trend, obviously. He's yeah. freaking out. That's what it was. He was freaking out because he had just injected himself that day. <laughs> 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 but no, I'm not afraid of anybody, man. I, I just too old, too old to care. Um, no, but he probably beat my ass. I'd imagine. I I don't know. Like you said, I don't you ain't even know until you're in it. <laughs> no, no, I'm telling you. That's the thing. I don't I, fight I, ever, so I'm not a fighter. So I'm not a big fighter, but but when the rage takes over, bad things happen. I mean, I'll fight. I might get my ass kicked, though. That, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> so, you know, it just happens. Um, speaking of just happening, we're uh, 185 until Naked Snake. We got a little bit of time left, though. Got that's a little amazing. bit of time left. So we're going to have a little bit of fun. Um, Jenna says, I was a pushover all the way through school. Then I snapped my finals. That's what I'm saying. I was the biggest pushover in school. I was a nerdy kid. I was a pushover. I was not about that life. And uh, 
I'm not like that anymore. <laughs> I'm not, I will absolutely not take shit from people. And it's not because like I'm a badass or anything. It's just I'm too old to care anymore. Um, yeah. So I'll tell somebody to fuck off immediately. Especially like some random new dude at the gym that's been there for like a week trying to say you're going to get kicked out for not following a, a rule that's not a rule. The rule is the all the rules are posted at the gym and there's like there's like five and none of them have anything to do with that. It's right. not that kind of gym, I'm guessing. It's not that kind of gym. Yeah. It's not this yeah. is not Planet Fitness. Yeah. So um yeah. Um this dude uh, doesn't make the rules. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so, and I haven't seen him since. He hasn't come to he he goes to the gym seven days a week. He hasn't been there. Yeah, he's time. probably changed his because of what happened. He probably changed his schedule. He's embarrassed because he expected you to or I, I don't know. He, like you said, he's not used to people talking back. So the fact that you did probably scared him. He's like, oh, he might actually fight me. Oh, I fucking would 100 percent. Like I said, he might beat my ass. But I was ready, dude. I was so fucking ready. He was like walking away. And he'd stop like like act like he's he's stop and look at me and smirk. And I was like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, dude, like, why are you st I'm just right here. Either fucking go or come back. What are you doing? And he was Is probably it, confused. Because you didn't back down. You didn't look scared. You didn't do the whole thing where you're like, oh, sorry, dude. No, I just told him to fuck off. I don't care, man. Good. Oh, too old for that shit. Oh, so silly. He's so silly. He's probably, yeah, like you said, he's probably used to that shit. Um, but yeah, I don't, I haven't seen him since. I figured I was going to wave at him next. I, I was ready. I went there the next day and I walked in the doors and I was looking for him because like, I was going to wait till he connected eyes and I was going to be like, what's up, dude? <laughs> like, I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't, you don't give a fuck about no fucking man lit ass angry guys that are, you ain't got nothing going on in your life if you're worried about some bullshit like that. Come on. I've seen dudes do some heinous shit at the gym. And if it gets really bad, I like tell the gym owner, I'm like, look, dude, this guy's like fucking doing this weird gay. Like, it's he's like leaving his shit everywhere. He's like, I was gonna say he's taking dumps poop. in the corner. Yeah, there's like a turd in the corner. You fucking shit in the corner. Like, maybe you should look into this. I'll tell the gym owner because I know him personally, but I'm not gonna yeah. go to do it. I'm like, oh, we'll fucking fight you if you turd in the gym. You know, fuck, you turd <laughs> if in the you gym? Turd in the gym. It might be different if he turds on me. <laughs> um, Messmaker says, did you see where in the Oompa video for like eight seconds, Steven Crowder is losing his mind? He used a clip of you energy interviewing quarter black Garrett. Yeah. Um, I think it was Karis sent me a screenshot of that. That's awesome. Maybe? Yeah. It was just the, uh, Oompa bill did a video and it's just my videos in the video. That doesn't lead to anything. <laughs> Subscribers did not change. <laughs> but it was cool to see. It was the only way you can get effective by subscribe sub sub growth is they have to make a whole video dedicated to your ass. Just to you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it has to be like all about it. Like all about that shit. It has to be you and one hundred percent you. Um yeah. Um, yeah, no, I don't understand. Yeah, Jenna, I don't I don't get it. I was I was very I was very thrown off about it. <laughs> you should have done that. That would have been good. Ask girl thought it was like really hot that I told him to fuck eat my ass and fuck off. I'm like, I yeah, mean, what am yeah, I ain't gonna fucking uh, almost slipped on your almost children. <laughs> oh, whiskey sour. Oh, Adam preach. Yeah, they made a whole video today. Came to my ass, and I got like a thousand subs. I was really that's impressed. awesome. Good people, good people. Um, that's no, that I agree, Jay. I don't, I don't at all. Um, I don't think I haven't thought about it really. Um, other than telling the story to people, uh, it's a story. You got to tell it. Yeah. I don't uh, know if, if I will never, I'm not going to walk up to, I'll, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. You know? Um, so I've had days like that where I was like in a real bad mood and um, I've never done that shit, but I've, I was, I've worked at GameStop before when I was working and I had a bad day and like I was working with a part-timer and I gave him a little bit of grief. Not anything crazy. I didn't yell at him, but you know, I gave him, I was a little, a little hard on him. And I was sitting at home later and I was like, God damn, what the fuck? What did I do that for? And I quite literally like called them and was like, Hey, I'm sorry, like for being a dig bag. I've done it. So, um, you know, people have bad days. So yeah. I'm just saying, like, in the moment, I ain't going to fucking back down. I'll tell you to eat my ass. Um, so, so whatever. See, Avon Preach gave something back. Good people. I mean, that's how I got here. Let's be fair. Um, every time uh, one of my YouTube videos would pop off, three creators that are big would make a, a video about me and it would just really help. I mean, review tech did it. Um, a clean prints did it. A lot of people did it for me and it really That's helped so me. Nice. Um, my boy review tech, review techs kind of having like a meltdown right now. Um, and just fucking lashing out at everybody. I don't know what he's going through. I can't imagine it's good, but yeah, he's been tripping balls on Twitter lately. 
And oh my oh, god, no. man, that sucks to see, man. He's like, he's like tweeted about me being pissed at me, and I'm like, what the fuck? Nah, whatever. You know, I get it. It's, you go through some shit. I just, I wish people didn't get on social media there and that kind of stuff. I agree. I've never once aired anything on social media and I, I just don't think it's necessary. If I really have a problem with a friend, I hope that they're a good enough friend that I can go to them and talk to them about it. Yeah. Like I, I like I can call, like if I was pissed at you, I could call you up and be like, Hey dude, this is what I'm pissed about. A hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's how it should be. Yeah. I don't think it should be serious. Um, speaking of thinking shit serious, uh, we are <gasps> 180 from Naked Snake? I don't know. I think we're something like that. Hell yeah. 180. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was something about Melanie Mac, uh, Billy. Something about Melanie Mac. Uh, speaking of Melanie Mac, she'll be on uh, my show Monday. Nice. So don't miss that. Monday, it'll be me, me and Melanie Mac. Me, Melanie, me, 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 Mac. Talking about Melanie. some bullshit. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun. We got to wish happy birthday to Revenge of the Nether Realm. How old are you, Revenge? Can I get a birthday wish? What the fuck do you want me to wish for you? Happy birthday. I'm wishing it's a good one. How about that? How about that? You know what happened on my birthday? You know what happened on my birthday? I streamed for 20 hours. I don't know why I did that. It was I think stupid. I streamed for three on my birthday. That's not close to 20. <laughs> I was number one on YouTube that day. Hell yes. And uh, it was an awful stream. It was so long. I was dying. I, I think it was almost at hour 21. And I was like, I got to get the fuck off. I'm about to die. I'm wondering what the longest I could go is before I was, I'm just done like that. 20 hours is a long fucking time. Um, I've done 24 and a half. Okay. But there's just certain points where it gets real brutal. Cause you're, you're tired of shit and it's, I can't, I couldn't imagine trying to be on for that long. You know what I mean? Yeah, like there's, thank God for all the people that joined. Thank yeah. You. Cause I would have never made it alone. Yeah, no, that's that's too much to carry on your own for that long. Revenge is 34. Happy birthday, Revenge. Hell yeah. Happy Hope birthday. Hope you're doing well. Um, I am also 34. And speaking of 34. I'm 44. Gross. In 14 <laughs> days, guys. 14 days. Two weeks and two days. I'll be racing at Talladega Super Speedway, the NASCAR Arkham Menard Series. It'll be on Fox Sports 1, I think, at noon. If you have cable, if you have this Fox Sports app, um, you could probably find a stream. Make sure you're paying attention. It's going to be my first race at a super speedway, 190 miles an hour. We'll be in the Frog Car, 01 Ford Cyber Frog Car. Please make sure you're watching it. If you're close to Talladega, come, come watch it live. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, very, very excited. We had my first ever ARCA race was a few weeks ago. We finished 10th. That's the goal again is to get a top 10 at Talladega. It's going to be hard. There's 40 cars. There's going to be like 45 cars, um, except five won't qualify. I'm locked in, though, for the first time ever. <laughs> I'm locked in by points, so I can Yay. literally not even show up at qualifying, and I still get in, so thank God. Um, so that's going to be fun. Grifty on uh, Rumble says, YouTube being gay, thanks for helping to destigmatize TRT for me. Six months on, 200 milligrams every two weeks, turn 40 this month, feel like I'm 25. Down yeah. Pounds. Um, yeah, I don't understand why people shit on TRT. Uh, sh people shit on TRT as if it's gear, and it's not. It's not even in the same fucking realm. Yeah, um, no. Low dose TRT has like zero side effects. But uh, uh, non well, are measure. All it is is replacing lower yeah. doses. It's just getting you back up to where you're supposed to be, right? Like that's yeah. the whole. You point might of it. get a bump, like an acne bump, like one or two on like your shoulder or something. That's like the extent of whatever I've experienced. Um, and it might age you into the age you should look, by the way. Um, when I was 28, I looked like a 19-year-old kid. And then, you know, I, I, I fucking hopped on and I looked 28 within like a month. So. Wow. Um, yeah. And I still look the same. I hit 28 and then I stayed this way. Um, I think I might, if I don't look back at an older video, I might look really young and be sad. I know in 2020, I looked, I, my head was fat as fuck looking for some reason. <laughs> um, but that went away too, thank God. So, but no, it just, it just makes you leveled. It makes you what you should be, right? Um, yeah. Low dose TRTs, it's fine. The issue is, is if you go somewhere and you have low T, if you have low T as a 23 year old or, or sorry, if you have low T as a 35 year old, um, it could still be in the acceptable range, and the range is huge. You could be getting almost no testosterone, and it still be technically acceptable. So you just have to suffer. 
right? Um, so sucks. no, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, I think it's good to be on the mid to uh, almost uh, physiologically impossible. What do they What do they call it? F- super physio- physiological uh, levels. Anyways, I, I don't know what you're trying to being say. Being right above super physiological is where you want to be. Okay. That's like the the natural, like where you're right above what you can produce naturally. That's where I think you should be. Um, so like, for example, women. Women can get on extremely low dose testosterone. Extremely low. Um, and I'm talking like two, 10 milligrams a week. And that'll get them right above super physiological levels. No, it's super califragilistic expialidocious level. Slosher, <laughs> Slosher's right. He has, yeah, yeah, and um, that all that it just cures a lot of like issues people have. Right? I would be curious to get tested to see where I'm at. Yeah, like uh, women, I've trained women in the past that got on a really low dose, and it completely removed their depression. It completely f- fixed their libido. I would like it, that. And they they like would lose ten pounds in like a month. All right, you know what? This sounds great. Sign me up. I need to lose the ten pounds I gained. Actually, but, I don't think I want to lose the full 10 pounds I gained. I just want to lose five of them. Five of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, you got your titties at least got 10. My boobs c- account for, I've already done the math and looked it up. They account for three pounds. So if I lose five, it'll only be two pounds that I gained, which is fine because I'm trying to grow the booty. Dude, I'm right there with you, Tanner. Um, the booty will will help. It'll help with the testosterone. Um yeah, the energy yeah. levels kill you. Chris says, bro, look 68. What, you talking about forehead wrinkles? Bro, look at them. Dude, I, I, okay, so sometimes I'm like slightly self-conscious about my forehead wrinkles. Really? But then I realize that I'm a guy and I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Wow, oh, fuck it. Because I could get, um, I could get, um, what do they call it? What is it called? You know, Botox? Botox. Yeah, I could get Botox in my forehead and completely get rid of that, but I just I got to start getting a little bit of Botox. I'm I don't care enough. Still, I'm being a baby about it. I, I kind of like the forehead it. wrinkle. It's distinguished. Yeah, I kind of like them. Um, I, sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. Uh, but I really didn't like them at first, but now I'm like kind of getting into the where I don't really care. You know? So, um, I'm on PC tonight. What are you talking about? I'm on PC as well. That's what yeah. I'm always on. Eric Lineker, I love you. I appreciate you guys. We're closing up on the end of the show. I'm about to piss my pants. I'm going to go take a pee real quick. Um, we are 183 from Naked Snake, I think. 183. I could be wrong. Um, let me uh, uh, choose someone to raid. But I'm going to get Zia to tell you where you can follow her so I can take a pee real quick. Hold on. Oh, my I'm God. I'm literally about to piss my pants. Go pee. Well, or just pee in a jar. Just drink don't accident, don't accidentally drink it. Let's do Mama, Mama Oko. What what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> All right, two seconds. Zia, tell everybody where they can follow you real quick. <gasps> it's Zia Land everywhere. If you guys want to follow me, it's Zia Land X I A X I A L A N D. I know how to spell m- my own name. Absolutely. Totally. That was a that was very convincing, I realized. Um, X-I-A-L-A-N-D, all one word on Instagram and, I mean, on, on YouTube and OnlyFans. Jesus H. Sorry, guys. It's been a long day. Um, and then Zealand, X-I-A underscore L-A-N-D on Twitter and on Instagram. And Eric Linegar, I'm not going to say anything because, <laughs> Sonia, you're so adorable. Shut your beautiful face. I mean, I'm just kidding. Please don't. Keep talking. Um, Eric Linegar, obviously we'll wait for Cody to get back, but holy heck, my friend, Jesus H fucking Christ. Thank you so much. Now we get to do Nick and Snake. Holy shit. Eric Linegar just comes in. He's like, what do we need? Bam. And then he says, pee your pants. I wish Cody saw that. He should have just peed his pants. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh yeah. Tomorrow night at 8 PM Eastern on my YouTube channel. I'm going to do the snack stream. We're going to try some new snacks, some fun stuff I've never had before. Uh, can't wait to do that. Also, I've been building some Legos. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Slasher sent me some Legos. And now I have Lego cacti. (laughs) This is literally one of my favorite things in the entire world now. So we did Lego cacti. Look at this one. Look at it. Oh, God damn it. Oh, God damn it. I'm breaking it. Uh, oh, and Jenna, these are so, so, so much fun. I forgot how much fun Legos are. And also the great thing about these is they really are 
I don't know if they're meant for children, but they they make the the instructions pretty easy. So you feel it's you know it's probably dummy proof. Like I feel like a child, but I feel so accomplished every time I put one together. I'm like, oh yes, how dare you, Billy Hatcher? They're so much fun. Oh, and see, then God also damn. Dobby, so, so fucking thick looking. Wait, am I unmuted? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Think that people might have heard that. Maybe it's a joke. It was on purpose. <laughs> Look at my Dobby. <clears throat> Hold on, I don't want to see him. Hold on. I remember when you got the box out the other day. <clears throat> I know. Look at him. Look he at looks, him. He's way too cute uh, compared to him in like the movie. Adorable. Yeah, no, you're right. In the movie, he looks actually kind of terrifying. He looks like a little old man in the movie. At least he doesn't look like creature. Oh, creature with his hooked nose, his voice. He's like, hey, hey. creature. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. And they're also like really good at magic, aren't they? Yeah, house elves are actually very it. powerful. Yeah, they have magic that that wizards can't quite uh, fathom because they just look at them as lesser beings, but they're quite powerful. It's like NBA. Okay, not to be Steve. NBA. It's like the NBA. <laughs> WNBA. Oh wait, no. One <laughs> Come on. Come on, that was good. No, did anybody get it? Okay, whatever. <laughs> at the NBA. So we just realized that uh, they're quite good at, good at that. <laughs> That's a joke. Jesus. Come on, guys. Um, Eric <laughs> Linegar, guys, with a $200 super chat. You're supposed to pee your pants, but you already walked away. My man. I tell you what, this dude dropping a two hundred dollar spot. Where are you at? Eric Linegar is on the car four times, by the way. Four times. He's on there six now. Six Eric Linegar's on my car at Kansas. You'll be riding with me and Tim, the Tim Cast Machine. Um, I've already showed the car. I'll show it again real quick. Eric, I love you, dude. I appreciate you. You got us there. We're like a few dollars from Naked Snake, but we're already there, basically. Ah, we're there. Thank you so much for getting us to the point. You are the man, the myth, the legend. Here is the Tim Cass car. Okay, cool. I can just hit left and right. All right. Sometimes, you know, you uh, hit left on downloads, and it doesn't uh, do what it's supposed to do, and then it just shows a nude. Um, Here it is right here. This is the Timcast car, everybody. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, people online were like uh, tearing it apart. And really? I, I think it looks slick as hell. It's because it's not finished. It doesn't have the um, the sponsors right here. It doesn't have the number. And it's kind of like a loose kind of like, you know, 3D model. And it's like, it's very 3D. It's like a very mm. 3D model um, that my buddy Josh did. Did a great job. And um, it's going to look really cool when it's done. So I like the color um, a lot that um but we do have a space on the bumper and right in front of the left and right wheel of the rear wheels um if you have a company or a youtube channel or anything and you want to jump on it's super cheap because those are the smallest parts in the car you can jump on all year or just jump on for one race and uh that should get me to break even range for the whole year so thank you guys so much and thanks so much to tim pool for fucking trusting in me for whatever reason um so thank you so much. I appreciate you. It's time for Naked Snake. You guys ready? Or do I'm you have ready. To go, do you have to go put on a thing or are you just going to rip your clothes off? I'm just going to rip this off. Oh, okay. What about your bottoms? Um, I'm, not wearing, I'm not wearing any underwear. Oh, God, I fucking love gross women. <laughs> 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 oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm like a whore. Like, I, 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 don't remember, I don't remember what. It was like a few weeks ago fucking ass girl had like a, she just had like an extra large shirt on or like a double xl or triple maybe i have an old shirt it's like a triple xl that i used to hang on my wall and then when i moved i took it off my wall and then it somehow became circulation so she wears it sometimes and it's like a fucking gown and she'll just be just ass cheeks and she'll like bend over and i'll just see like fucking labias and my balls like start shaking it's like, such a doing? sexy look somehow it is god because it's god. like this is a big t-shirt but then everything's sort of peeking out underneath it it's very cute it's peeking oh my god wow oh my god look at it look at a little spider's mouth it's just um, saying hello thank you eric real quick let me get a shout out to the red boys today eric you are a monster so ready. maple invictus with a three 
hundred dollar. Three hundred. Three hundred dollar red boy and William Baker with a hundred dollar. Thank you guys so much. You're keeping us in the game every single show. I appreciate you. Pink boys are Billy Hatcher, William Baker, Maple Invictus, Disco Cobra, and Disco Disco Cobra. Cobra. Five (laughs) pink boys. It was a pink ass night today. And I think we got one, a two, a three, three red boys or almost a red boy night. I think we've hit a red boy night for like weeks now. It's crazy. Thank you guys so much. Let's do Naked Snake. And then I'm going to watch a a show I just started. Make sure you like the damn show, by the way. I have a new video coming out Tuesday. Like the show. Monday is me and Melanie back. Tuesday, a new video. Thursday, I'm flying to North Carolina and unveiling the frog car on Twitter. So follow me on there. And I'll put it on my my Facebook as well. So follow me on there as well. And then Saturday, be me and Zia again. And we'll have a guest Saturday that I've been already working on. And then the Saturday after that, I will not have a show because I'll be racing at Talladega. So, Zia, you better watch it live. I'm going to watch it live. Talladega is a big deal. Yeah, don't miss it. Okay, don't miss it. It's going to be like you just look for the green car. I'll be the only green car in the whole field. You I'm going to have my little green car that I got from the you know from the thing the campaign, and I'm going to be like, mm, 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 while I watch you race. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you? you're not even drinking. And you're party. <laughs> oh yeah, Billy Hatcher's going to be there. It's going to be awesome. Dude. Hell yeah. Oh, it's so awesome. Then you know, Billy, um, for your first time at a place like Talladega, um, heads up, it is faster than you think it is. <laughs> and everybody learns this um when they go to their first like big, big super speedway race. Um, but the cars are going faster than you think they are going. And then they then you see on TV. I'm excited. Um it's I it looks, see you in Dover. I've never seen a race. Dover's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I'm excited for Dover as well. That's like a week after that. Hey, you'll be at that one. So that makes sense. I will be at that one. Yeah, that's going to be fun. We'll stream or something. We'll stream, do something. Yeah, All right, boys. We love you guys. Let's do some Naked Snake, and then we're going to uh, we're gonna raid, ooh, Octopus Girl. Octopus Girl! There's like a, a, there's I like like her. a, uh, a streamer. She's playing Dark Souls, and she's, her thing's an octopus. Her like little, she's like an octopus girl. And she's Do holding it. a potato or something. That so we're going to rate her. I don't. I, I saw she commented on my Twitter and said she wanted to do a show with me. So I just uh, fall, subscribed to her. So now she's on my raid list. So I'm going to rate her. She's, she's playing Darkest Dungeon? Is that what yeah. you just said? I fucking What's, love that game. What is this? <laughs> Who sent me this? Oh, okay. Never mind. I got a phone. Love you, Karis. Appreciate you. <laughs> Let me know what uh, which one that's for. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Love you, Karis. My boy. My boy's too good at me, man. I tell you. I can't even imagine. Can't even fathom my boy, Karis. All right. Let's do Naked Snake. Right, here we go. Where is my... There it is. All right, boys. Here we go. 291 in a row. It never stops. It never stops. Get ready for Zia's perfect titties. Ass girl said your titties were the new ones are just literally perfect. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love it. Here we go. I appreciate you guys so much. Make sure you follow Zia Land at Zia underscore land on Twitter and Zia uh, underscore land on YouTube as well. No, just Zia Land on YouTube. Zia Land on YouTube. Here we go. It's time. Let me move my broken camera or mic. I won't subject you guys to hearing me sing again. I'm sorry. Darkness and silence in the night. Here we go, boys. I'm so 291 in a row. Thank you guys so much. It's time. Let's do it. Here we go. Look at her titties. Here we go. In my time, there'd be nobody else. Look at them. Amazing. Cry. It's the way I fly to you. Here we go, boys. You ready? 
I'm still in a dream, snake eater. Here we go. It's time. Look at those titties. Look at what they can do. Goddamn. Talented. Amazing. I give my life, boys. <laughs> Not for honor, but for you. Look at these movies. Look how great they are. So I love them. I love them. They're like two this bowling was, balls. This was the set I needed all along. <laughs> and you can do bench press. And I can do bench press. Yeah, I can go back to doing chest exercises. Yeah, that's what Ass Girl said. She's like, yeah, I could never do under the muscle because I have to do bench press. Honestly, over the muscle, I mean, under the muscle was a mistake for me. Over the muscle was the way I should have done it. Got it. Amazing. Alan Jones, love you. I appreciate you, Alan Jones, for your blue boy. Thank you so much. Jenna, get on it, dog. Okay, Rose. The blue boys are starting to line up. I appreciate you guys. Here we go. One more time. One more time, boys. Ready? Thank you. I appreciate you. Amazing. Thank you guys so much for all your love today. You guys have been crazy as hell. Don't forget Fox Sports best 1. Fucking best. April 20th. We'll be racing at Talladega. My first Super Speedway race. I'm so excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you're watching it. Um, and also, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And then you'll get all the updates there as well. Thanks to all my boys in blue. I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks to all these Super Chats. The last one of the night being Karis. Don't forget Eric Lineker. Don't forget all the Red Boys. Disco Cobra went hard as fuck. Slosher. You guys know who you are. Invictus. Old Maple Invictus. Thank you so much for all that you do. And William Baker. You guys know who you are. You guys have been an insane support system for me my entire career so far. Revenge. Thank you. Happy birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to Revenge. He now is the last one of the night. Um, what do you got planned in the next uh, week? Zia? You got a snack show tomorrow? Got snack stream tomorrow at 8. We're going to eat snacks, probably do a bikini, maybe some more. I mean, if we hit bikini, we'll do bikini. Um, do some more Legos. Um, and then, <laughs> yeah, Zia next Tuesday on Tuesday at 8. And then Thursday is Unqualified Experts. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun week. I'm excited. Do you have anybody scheduled for Wednesday? No, uh, for no Thursday. I got it. No, and I need to. I need to get a guest for Thursday. I've been really lazy about that, I so I've been doing them myself. <laughs> you you want to do it? Yeah. No. No. Oh, I thought that's what you just said. I'll I'm be do in it. North Carolina at Thursday unveiling the frog car. God damn it! <laughs> no, yeah, I will. I'm gonna get on top of it. So you could, um, you could, you could get it's a Gundam, maybe. Do you think that he would do it? Maybe. I could reach out to him. I talked to I him mean, today. He said he was real tired and couldn't come on this show. Well, he probably will be like, I don't know who you are. Go fuck yourself. But it's worth a try. Just send him your titties. I'll just, yeah, you're right. I'll send him a picture of my boobs. He's like, a man. Please come on my stream. <laughs> he's a simple man. You know, <laughs> he likes titties. I love titties. You know, I do too. I think they're That's great. Good way to go. Yeah, get coffee on them. Yeah, I'll have begun them on real soon as well. Um, we've yeah. been talking back and forth. So I appreciate you guys so much for all your love. You guys have been crazy as hell. Mudbug over on Rumble. I love you. Let's uh, make sure you say Cam Raid in the chat. Do not leave. Stay for the raid and give, um, give, uh, oh, featuring, featuring Gina Mercury. Interesting. Oh, I don't think she's on here anymore. There's no way. We're going to raid Octopus Girl. Her name's Mama Ako. I'll see you guys over there. Get on it, dog on it. Thank you. I love Bye, you. Bye, guys. are the best. I love you. Bye, everybody. Like the show on the way. Bye. Out. Like, like the it. show. Like it.